Y'all thought I was dead? I'm on it. Came back on you instead. Karma. We ain't partners and we damn sure ain't friends. Raising hell till that's where you descend. You a damsel distressed. And I ain't Captain Save a whole neither. It's the first of rent, dude. Hey, it's gon' leave her. Any questions? Save it for the teacher. Only thing that you should ask is what to pay me for a feature. Baby, sign your t-shirt. And you should do your research. All right, dope, dope, dope. I can hear you. All right, so we're gonna do a little countdown here. Three, two, one, striker. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Brolific. I am your host, Tony Vincent. With me tonight is a extremely special guest, the long time awaited JP from the HP, aka John Panich, aka John Sandwich, aka John from Hamtramck. He likes some pizza and bacon with a side of pantyhose. Let's get it. All right. <laughs> JP, it's been a long time coming, man. How are you? I'm good, man. I'm good. Good, good, you're, good. You're huge. You're on a you're on a 60 inch TV right now, dude. That's just like how I like to be. I like to feel right. huge. If you right. know what I'm saying. Yeah, I that's know. What, that's saying. what I like, man. That's what I like. Uh feeling you like, like a movie. Feel huge. So you like to feel huge. I like to uh I have this condition. It's called um erectile dysmorphia ah it's where i no matter how hard i am when i look down i see a very flaccid dick okay very very shriveled and flaccid yeah but i could be so as hard as possible but like i have this Uh, condition i'm not i that just like i just think i'm limp so i constantly have to be told that i'm hard yeah you have to be told you're aroused Oh yeah, erectile dysmorphia. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that your dick is playing tricks. You got a tricky dick. Yeah, dude. D- yeah. Tricky dick. Oh damn, man. So yeah, man. Let's uh, let's jump right into it. So we've known each other for uh, for quite a while, quite a while, I would say. Um, at this point in time, now my recollection of meeting you for the first time, I have two different scenarios that I think are how I met you. And I'm trying to remember which one is accurate. So obviously I know originally we started talking on MySpace. So for the kids that don't know what that is, that was like the, uh, the Facebook before Facebook, you know, it was, a, it was a lot cooler. Dude. You could customize a profile, put some glitter on the background if you wanted to. It was so cool. Yeah. Like for, for the individual, like so cool to like customize, be your, be yourself you know like yeah it was yeah it was all it was awesome and you could click on a profile and all of a sudden fallout boy is playing i found out man da, 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 have you heard of so oh, yeah. da, damn song whatever that is yeah that was your profile song. that was your profile <laughs> exactly that was exactly yeah. how it went but yeah i remember we were uh i'm trying to remember how like i came across your information i don't know you know, how, if I randomly saw your MySpace profile, somebody told me about you. I'm just, I'm trying to remember, but I remember us talking on MySpace. BG told me about you. I remember BG, that. BG. Brad, Brad Gerdowski told me about the stereo killers. Oh, interesting. Okay. I'm trying to remember. Uh, like Johnny, do you remember Johnny something? I forgot his last name, but Johnny, Italian dude, looking dude, Johnny something. And Brad lived with them in Madison Heights and like they like Brad met you somewhere. He told me about you guys. It sounds I mean it sounds really, really familiar. I'm trying to trying to wrap my head around it, but that's that's probably yeah. So he must have given me like your MySpace or some some of your information. Brad always looks like I looked three years ago. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll be taking it. We'll be taking it way back then. But yeah, no, it was, it was something like that. And I remember reaching out to you because I had the Madison Heights song. You had the Hazel Park song. So we were we were repping our uh, perspective, our perspective, uh, blue collar, white uh, populated uh, wife beater wearing towns. Yeah. Uh, oh, where, yeah. where drinking alcoholic beverages is uh, is the main uh, main course meal. Yeah. And uh, oh, doing, yeah. Doing, doing sexy stances like that. Well, Madison that's, Heights is where the bitches fuck. That's where the bitches fuck. And then yeah, Hazel that, Park has the La Casa Inn. So you take yeah. the bitches from Madison Heights to the La Casa Inn. Oh, yeah. 
that's Mad that's the Heights where the bitches fuck i remember that one yeah that was that was still my uh, best song i still haven't lived up to a still haven't surpassed that yeah man that was that was my local one hit wonder um yeah. but yeah because like what i remember there's either two scenarios like one of them is you um the first time me seeing you in person was you opening up because we were me and adam were having a record release party at record time and we had you and black james and then like another uh rogues gallery of cats um yeah. too but i'm trying to think like it seems like that would be like a really weird time to first meet each other because the other memory i have is you coming to adam's garage when we needed some weed and you were you brought us some weed which weed is legal now, so we don't have to worry about that being incriminating uh, information. I remember, see, okay, so I remember Adam in the garage, and I don't really remember, like, we didn't, because we became, like, actual friends and stuff, but, like, if I wasn't, like, actually friends with you, I probably don't remember much about you, unless we've, like, talked. Yeah. So, I think I met Ed, I met, the first time I remember seeing any of you, any of you guys was in a garage, was yeah. in, I seen Adam in a garage, meeting Adam in a garage. I like talked to you to get there. You led me in there, but I don't remember seeing you in there. I remember Adam's face. <laughs> I disappeared. I, want yeah. you, I, I led you in the garage and then I left. It was like. A, Adam and he had like maybe a really small beard at the time. Yeah. He was just growing out his beard. Yeah. He was, he was, was just a starting really it. small beard. He was going through beard puberty. Yeah. He was just becoming that. Yeah. That's, that's what I think about. Cause it kind of seems like an odd, like never meeting somebody and saying, Hey, like come do this, come be here at the show. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to remember that show a little better because I don't right now. I don't remember that. Oh, it was, show. it was, I mean, it was as uh, hilarious as you can imagine, just like rapping in a small record store. It was at record time. In and, Ferndale? Yeah, Ferndale, downtown Ferndale. And basically we had the equipment, the PA system. I feel like even I, oh no, they must've had a PA system. Cause I don't think I, me and you would have been cool enough for me to ask you to get together a PA system for me at that yeah, point. Yeah, and I wouldn't have, at that point in time, I wouldn't have really known much about how to get a PA, get a PA system. <laughs> yeah, so they must already have one, but yeah, it was like towards where the windows are facing uh, Nine Mile is where we all like performed at. And uh, yeah, I mean, people would just be browsing the records and we're like out there like fucking, especially you. I mean, that's, you were going like ham. And, really? And I was like, man, dude, this dude is like, that was the first time I definitely saw you perform. I know that for sure. Cause I was like, dude, what the fuck? This dude is like performing like he's on like a stadium stage and there's people like fucking like old people with glasses, like just browsing the records. Like you required zero energy of the people in that store. Like I was just, I remember being just amazed by that because I, I remember for us, it was like, man, it felt so awkward just like trying to get into it. And like, people are not there for a rap show at all. They're mm -hmm. literally just like looking for an old, uh, you know, James Dean record or something like not. Uh, yeah. That's what, that's, that's what they listen to for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the J James Dean record, you know, you know what James Dean listeners listen to. Yeah, dude. Shout out to all you James Dean listeners that, <laughs> you James that have Dean. followed me since that show and are still following me. To yeah. This day. Um, the James Dean collaboration is still coming. I promise you. Yeah, man, it's got it's got to come. But yeah, that's that's my first memory. That's my first memory with you, really in person, aside from that garage. And uh, and yeah, and then we started really. It's so funny, like thinking about that time period, because th between then and like when you started working on Sucker Free School Zone Volume 2, it seems like there was such a giant gap of time, but it was really like the same year. It was like we came out with that Stereo Killers album like April of 2007, and we started working on Sucker Free Volume 2 like end of summer, early fall 2007, really. I mean, yeah, man, we were like an album and a mixtape a year kind of like yeah like, that was like the pace we were trying to move at you know like yeah that was like what you know ti would be doing or something you know what i mean like yeah like, dropping hit after hit we were, we were trying to, like that. 
we you were know? trying to keep it keep it going keep that train keep that train a uh, choo chewing oh yeah T- time's crazy when you think back when you're young and things seem like spread out they're not like yeah fucking jim carrey came out with three movies in 1994 yeah that's fucking cra- that's you know crazy that's I mean? crazy like, to think about yeah like wow that's crazy yeah. to think about yeah man the 90s dude like I, I I've been wondering, and this is something I actually wanted to ask you about, because, you know, you, you might remember, like, I remember the nineties, you might remember the nineties a little bit better than I do. Do you um, think it actually happened? Yeah, no, that's, that's uh, what I'm saying. That's like, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we, no that, we'll no, we'll that, get that, into what actually happened in, in a minute, but you know, like you think about shit and you're like, man, the nineties, you know, there's so much nostalgia. It was so cool. It was such like an amazing time to grow up. And like, part of me is like, you know, maybe I just thought we'd think that cause we were kids. And when you're a kid, everything's magical, but now like going back and like watching like Pulp Fiction or Johnny Mnemonic or some of this like weird oddball shit that would, it seemed like only in that era, would they allow some shit like that to come out? Like, it's just like, it didn't seem like there was a lot of gatekeepers back then trying to like prevent creativity or at least as much i mean i'm sure there was it to some degree but just like whether you think about the movies the music the culture in general it just seems like like i remember i don't know if you remember the channel the box yeah you you could call and request like them to play a music video and shit yeah and like i remember the box work Oh, I have no idea. So yeah. How did that even like? Why did that, what? What was like the logistics of that? <laughs> did somebody like answer the phone? You're like, it's a rate. You're calling the box. Tell me what you like, and how so, many people were calling them at the same yeah, time? Every caller, I think it was that was exclusive to like one of the service providers, right? Like the I box. Think. You only got there was like two things. Which what was Comcast before Comcast? It depends on the area. I think in some areas it was Ameritech. Yeah. Um, um, but there was continental cable yeah. vision. Continental. Um, yeah. And then there was the other one. There was, I think, I think it was continental and Ameritech and they like split off or I don't know. What- well, there were, there was a bunch of once upon a time and I'm not, you know, as someone who knows a little bit about cable, but that's a separate life. So I'm not going to discuss it too much here. Um, but once upon a time, there was a bunch of smaller cable companies in every state because there was a lot more regulations to prevent, you know, this thing called monopolies. And yeah. eventually what happened- And like, is, what know, was a cable company? It was a company that ran cables. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. cable company, you know what yeah. I mean? Okay. That's exactly that's, what it was. And yeah, every okay. area had local cable companies that were specific to that area. But then what happened is AT&T, Comcast, the big corporations came in and just bought up all these small companies and, uh, you know, eventually, and then bought up, bigger companies and then bought up bigger companies until we're at like right now in this weird dystopian future where like there's four companies the corporate entity man what is it yeah no it's uh (laughs) it's 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 fucking wild man yeah it um, it happens that they do it to everything yeah (laughs) everything there's there's a million of me somewhere yeah in different realities man (laughs) we're uh but the corporations are getting the realities, man. They're fucking, you know, they're, all they're, the realities. They're buy, they're buying up the realities. Yeah, <laughs> we're soon they're gonna merge all the realities into one reality. Try to try telling anyone that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess we. we it we, is we, crazy to think about, though, man. Because I swear, like, especially thinking about the '90s, like bringing it back to the '90s, like doesn't it feel like that's like a just a different re, like a different dimension like it doesn't it's like like even really well, just, it is a different dimension like uh like literally you know yeah you know because uh, it was a time it was time a different time ago that we're no longer in and we can't like actually experience that perspective exactly yeah i think that that makes it a different dimension in a sense yeah because you yeah. you have no uh when you're in that time, all you know is that time. So you don't, you know, especially like pre 9 11, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like pre 9 11. 9 11. Yeah. 11. The 11th of the 9th. 11th of the 9th. What is that? What is that? <laughs> 9 11. <laughs> yeah. I probably shouldn't be laughing about it because it's going to, we're going to be coming up on the 20 year anniversary of 9 11. 
And George Bush said he's got something. Isn't it 7-11? Well, they're both important. They were both inside jobs. Yeah. Along with Nine Mile Bridge. Yeah. But 7-11 was an inside job, but I got to go outside and have a cigarette. Yeah. Every once in a while, but for the most part, inside job. Wow. Wow. So, yeah, what are you getting at, dude? Well, I'm saying, man, like, if you think about it, like, if you think about the world before 9-11, like, it felt like a movie before 9-11. Like, you were living in a movie, like, you know, almost like the Wonder Years or something. You know what I'm saying? Like, it was like, it seemed like it was just more of an innocent time. And then, like, boom, you know, 9-11 happens and just everything's just fucking crazy. We don't trust anybody anymore. We don't trust the government. We think the government caused 9-11, um, which we I would have never around in the si- like I wasn't this. around in the 60s, but I would imagine there was like similar, uh, it was a similar climate, you know, like, I'm not sure that was like a new thing. I mean, I get, I know what you're saying. I don't agree with you. Or I don't disagree with you that we thought that w- like we didn't trust, there was a lot of government and media distrust back then um i i think or that it's not there now but it, you know i don't know i think it goes in waves you know like i i think uh like a few other generations like experienced a very similar thing yeah you know but just like with different like uh infrastructures and and like different flows of information and different power structures and shit like that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean, and I it guess was less of a corporate power structure. You know what true, I mean? Like, yeah. like it's corporate. Yeah. Like, like it's like a, it's all it, corporate. You know what that's Yeah. Called. Yeah. <laughs> they want it all corporate within the earth's orbit. Radio plays all your brain absorbs it. Yeah. <laughs> so you could do nothing but forfeit to the machine that wants to make it all corporate <laughs> they want to control it yes yeah, yeah, like that. yeah. yeah it's a cl- that's a classic song but yeah i predicted it man i predicted the future um but yeah no the 60s i feel like the 60s feels like now kind of with just like it's funny um now now we're gonna be getting in some sensitive territory but uh you know it's all it's all conversation it's all uh, hey know. man, it's just me and this. It's just yeah, me. It's just me and right? you, man. Yeah. It's, it's nobody else. You're but the only like, people in this room, dude. The the like racial like uh, issues now. It, it sounds silly because it's obviously there's always like racial you know issues and this kind of thing. But it feels like if you think about like the '60s, there was definitely oh shit, this guy's got the sniper, dude, bro. Be this careful, guy. dude. <laughs> Watch what you say right now. This guy's dude. got the fucking uh, the John Wilkes booth over here, bro. Bro, don't say anything <laughs> that I'm not going to like. <laughs> bro, if you Damn, say got, it, the, got the fucking, uh, uh, what the fuck is that dude's name, bro? Um, the dude that they blamed uh, the Kennedy death on. Uh Malcolm X. <laughs> Jesus. Christ. No, Ma- Malcolm in the middle. No, I don't yeah. know. Uh, you know the guy. The thing. Oswald. Oswald. Yeah, Harvey Lee o- Oswald. Yeah. Harvey Lee Oswald. Yeah, that that's he pulled out the Harvey Lee. Yeah. Isn't that a weird coincidence though? Like nobody who goes by middle like their middle name like like hey this is i'm talking to john william panich well did they in their lives do that or did the media just like uh like the newspapers and the tvs and the internet's just like uh like kind of perpetuate the use of the name in that way they probably because it does make someone sound more scary like john wayne gacy like yeah you know, like, like, uh, Billy D. Williams, yeah, Bill, yeah, yeah. So it's just like, oh, this guy's a fucking serial killer, bro. Like, yeah, he's got a middle name, like, fucking, you know, lock your doors. Like, this guy, you know, like, you'd think they would have gotten rid of middle names at this point. Luke Scott Skywalker, yeah. <laughs> Darth <laughs> Maul Vader, <laughs> yeah. Well, there's Obi Wan Kenobi, yeah. 
Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So there you go. It, it never stops. It keeps perpetuating. But yeah, man, and the, and the conspiracy theory stuff, man, that's like our that's like our secondary specialty. That's our secondary language, dude. Yeah. yeah. I love, I love, I love conspiracies. I always loved conspiracies. Um, and it's a way different. It seems like a different time for conspiracies. Like it's such a mainstream thing now. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I got into them cause I like exploring different realities, but I never made them like political in my own life. That's what's, you know what that's I mean? what's weird about now. You know, and right? now it's like, a, it's the, everything's political and everything's corporate. And yeah. what I think is like politics, like modern day politics is just a corporate tool, dude. You know? Oh yeah. And it's, like a cor- it's a corporate like brainwashing tool, you know? And they, they flash red and white or red and blues at you to fucking get you to fucking uh, be this way or that way. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, red and, blues, dude. red and blues, bloods and crips, dude. Fucking yeah. Democrats, Republicans. And that's what's funny. Like thinking about back when I got into conspiracy th- stuff, I'm pretty sure like the 9/11 stuff was what like started it for me. Because I remember my mom, bro. Like when 9/11 happened, she was dating an engineer. I mean, this dude had his problems, but he was he was an engineer. And like right away, like the day 9/11 happened, like we're like I'm over there watching on the news, and he goes, "Oh, that's a controlled demolition." Like before they released any information, yeah. before like it was anything, Osama bin Laden was even brought up. Like right away, like live, that's a, that's a controlled demolition right there. Yeah, like he said it like before I heard it on the internet. So you know, and this guy was a pretty smart dude. Be it he had his problems, but to say that before you're influenced by any like third party, you know that like you know that held weight. Not to say that this guy built the twin towers or he built buildings, but he was an he was yeah. a civil. Or he's like, an or like he, he's, a or he's even, or he's even um, been involved in the demolition of a building that big. You know, yeah. I mean? there's a lot of things that that you can't just take their word for it right away. You know, but I'm sure if you unpack it, like he knows the, the science and shit and all that. And yeah, no, he was probably, I mean, he's probably he right. Was incredibly, you know I mean? he was he was a pretty smart guy for sure, and so that always held a lot of weight. And then to start seeing like you know seeing it on the internet after that and like a lot of people come out about it and uh you know the fucking just the 9-11 commission report like having a bunch of shit missing and yeah uh, see i didn't even follow any of that shit like any of the any of the those things that were happening but like right away as soon as it happened and without any uh, this wasn't like this wasn't politics this yeah. wasn't like because i was a Trump supporter, you yeah. know what I mean, or like because I was whatever. Right away, I was like, "This is fucking kind of fishy, dude." Yeah, you know what I mean, like right away, I'm like, "I don't trust this shit, dude." Like, I didn't fucking buy it instantly, you know, and like, yeah, I didn't even fucking. I wasn't super into conspiracies. Like, yeah, like, I didn't even you know think. I mean, of, like, I didn't even think like about passive really before that interest, you know. It, it's a passive interest and it was just like oh well what if it happened this way that sw- switches the way you think about it you know what i yeah. mean like, like uh this is against the fucking green but it also makes sense it makes more sense than the r- the real account or whatever you know and it was just an interesting way to think of of the world in a different way than how it was presented to you oh yeah you know? i mean and, it made and, it and, really um and now that, that that's become a taboo thing and, and like it's we're we're told why conspiracies are dangerous conspiracies are dangerous yeah. like what the only way they'd be dangerous is if you have a lot of stake in yeah or well, if you're hiding you something yeah. yeah if you have a lot of stake in in controlling the way people think you know what i mean it's like yeah i'm uh, like i'm not but, but I don't know. I, I could see why they'd be, they are more dangerous in, in a time like this. Cause I see a lot of like, kind of like, uh, like activist type things happening that seem to be based on conspiracies. You know what I mean? It, like, 
Potentially. Yeah, but that shit. Here's what I'll say though about that, because that's that's kind of the idea that's getting flown out there. Right, and it's like and hard I for think, me to like, I'm like I get the what I understand someone's perspective if, if that's how they think it about it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. it, it's true. You well, know? It's, there are definitely people who do bad shit because they're influenced by a conspiracy theory, but that's been happening <laughs> long before Facebook and the internet. I mean, look at Timothy McVeigh. Look at the shit yeah. that caused Timothy McVeigh to become Timothy McVeigh, which was, you know, people that were cooped up in a house, paranoid about the government coming to get acid them. and fucking being afraid of technology. And yeah, like, all that shit. So, so this shit has always been a thing. It's just, I feel like, I feel like there's two things going on. One, you know, the internet has caused this crazy, uh, high speed evolvement of the human brain of where we're taking an information it's becoming it's becoming a a single brain like so to speak you know what it's i mean trying, like, yeah i mean that's yeah, that's the like, idea for sure yeah but, but we're taking in i mean if you think about it even like to your memory as a kid watching the news you really didn't see this world news as much it was more really local and then maybe something that happened within the country but you wouldn't see shit you know this happened in england this happened in china this happened here like you just wouldn't see all that. Now we're constantly flooded with every possible thing that's happening at the same time. The twenty-four hour news cycle. Yeah. Started. Started. They have out. to keep pumping that yeah. shit through the pipeline. So we think everything's a lot more scary than it is. Not to say that things don't happen in waves and there's you know civil uh, disruption and protest and riots and all this type of shit. You know the Capitol building thing. That's that was a big thing that happened. That wasn't like a that wasn't small potatoes. Definitely a market. What'd you say? The news is a market. Yeah, things well, it's it's, it's, it's all about ratings. Yeah, it's 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 being sold. Yeah, things are being sold, dude. People yeah. are pushing products through the news. And that's that's the irony of the whole like kind of idea where there was like it, it was it was made to be positioned that you would have like the left, as they called it, the liberal media, and then Trump as adversaries. But really, those two needed each other. Like the media's ratings went through the roof when he was president and his ratings went through the roof with them constantly yeah. covering every fucking, like he loved yeah. that. So he benefit, benefited from being vilified. You know yeah. what I mean? Because like, they were, con- like, anything, anytime he sneezed, they covered it. He did, yeah. And he did, he didn't act like presidents act. You know yeah. what I mean? So it was very easy to point out like his fucking things and, and be like, look at how dumb this guy is, or look yeah. at how much of an asshole this guy is. He's like acting like a regular person. He's acting like yeah. you. <laughs> look yeah. at acting like you would act. Yeah. You know what I mean? But like, <laughs> but yeah, everyone's like uh glued into the soap opera, man. Yeah. No, it's uh it's yeah, it, it's it's crazy thing, and you just don't know. Who to wrestling. trust? And that's that's the downfall of conspiracies. I think is uh, <laughs> you got it. You got it. To, you, I'm overloading you right now. I know I'm coming. I'm coming at you like a tiger. Well, I need start to start talking about time travel. I'm gonna fucking run, run out of the room. <laughs> well, we'll leave. We'll leave time travel for last. But that that'll be the dessert. We're still right, we're still right. working on the appetizers. But right. yeah, like. That's the that's the downfall. What I'll say. It's my weakness. My weakness, everyone, is is time time travel. travel. Yeah. Yeah. If you want to defeat me, just start talking about time (laughs) travel. If someone starts rap battling you, they're just gonna like bring up all this time travel philosophy. Yeah. I got the Mac and I'll shoot you out like Back to the Future. Come and whack. And I'm like, ah, I just like take off. I'm out. I'm out. I can't handle it. Panic. Panic attack. Yeah, go, no, uh, as you were saying, though, he's gonna panic from the Glocks. Put this man in a box when I go back in time with the grandfather paradox. <laughs> Why did you say grandfather clocks? No, because grandfather paradox is a tra- time travel term. Oh, yeah. I didn't know. You know, no. It's it's all anyway. about. <laughs> I will, I'll, I'll leave you I won't, mess with you. <laughs> yeah, I won't mess with you about it it'll fuck you up man that's like the atom that's like the fucking uh nuclear bomb if i bring that shit up yeah <laughs> um but yeah man it's like conspiracy theories like so many of them being out and available you know it, it makes it to where you just get in this endless cycle of not trusting shit and you can't even because the conspiracy theories themselves 
well disagree with each other so it's not like there's this one thought process or one you know um collection of conspiracy theories that all line up like you know there's the people who believe that aliens are real and the government's keeping them from us which is like the old school one right yeah and then there's the new school one which aliens don't exist and the government is planning a fake alien invasion i don't know if you've heard this well, that's old that's old that's an old that's, that's old yeah. i just heard about that project blue Beam, i mean like your underground like magazines and circulatories where you used to get conspiracies from like even in the fucking 60s 70s and shit you know the, the like but like project blue beam was like blue book, <laughs> blue book. yeah that like my friend's dad told me about that in like 2002 like brought it up and yeah. i already knew about it oh wow. you know what i mean yeah, like cool. i read it like oh that's cool you know yeah you know it was just a cool it was like cool way to think yeah to me you know yeah well i well aliens are fun i'd like to think they exist i don't like i don't like the theories that say they don't exist and that they're just a government like facade i don't like that yeah it's like a it's like a, like I think like religion is is like formed on a conspiracy that uh, just evolves and evolves and become and becomes solidified in our minds, you know. Yeah. Over time, you know, like, uh, it, yeah, it's like a, uh, I don't know, whatever. Fucking, <laughs> I don't want to go into. Well, it's, that. I mean, the Egyptians, man, like the fucking. Uh like the pyramids like this whole thing about like the pyramids aren't actually tombs for pharaohs they've never actually found a pharaoh in the pyramids yeah so, so there's theories that because they found evidence that they knew how to make batteries that all the pyramids in the world whether it's the mayan pyramids the egyptian ones i think there's some in asia somewhere like these are all power sources like natural power sources um that had basically fueled futuristic civilizations like they were crazy advanced you know you, you find the the drawings the old drawings of like flying cars and shit and all this yeah. like atlantis and all this kind of shit and people are even finding pyramids like underwater and shit like just how much the you know the natural disasters have changed what we actually can see above ground yeah like polar shifts and shit like that and like yeah yeah. So that's like, we're not even living in like, like we think we're the most advanced human beings have ever been, but we could like, if you went back like 20, 50,000 years, there might've been like flying cars and like crazy shit that we can't even wrap our heads around. They might've been doing space travel already. Yeah, probably. I mean, there, there's nothing that leads me to believe that there's those super advanced humans like aren't alien aren't what we would consider to be aliens you know and and that they're here now dude yeah they, they evolved possibly into like a fucking disc of light you know what i mean and like yeah that disc of light could be like a million billion minds fucking uh all condensed into one you know what i yeah, mean it's like, like a conscious a floating conscious yeah, yeah floating consciousness of like of a bunch of people you know and inside yeah, yeah. That, inside they, that like, floating consciousness they're like me and you are in there doing this you know yeah, I mean? yeah. well this lives forever man yeah that's like what's fucking crazy is like you know what if your soul what if this is our soul and like something crazy to fuck crazy or to think about, like this is a like, what recording. What is this? What do you mean? This is our soul. This, like, this is like what we're doing right now. This isn't even happening right now, bro. Like, like this is something like you know, like you know, like when you think of a memory. <laughs> yeah, soul is another word for consciousness, dude. And like we're sharing our consciousness. On yeah, it. We're sharing our soul. These devices that we we're, we're using. It's like a soul. It's a it's soul like, capturer. Yeah. It's capturing your soul. Yeah. But like, but capture, you know, means two different things, you know, ca capture, like captured you and take you into a basement and beat you or yeah. captured your picture like, yeah, photo, on a yeah. camera. You know what I mean? Like, but if you think about it, like maybe it's the same it, thing. Yeah. Could be. No, but like, because like, <laughs> 
thinking about it, man, with like technology constantly advancing and AI and shit and this AI learning how to emulate people like fucking dead celebrities or like, you know, there's rappers who died and there there's AI like making songs with their voice and shit. Like who's to say that's not really that person? Like what makes a person a person is their unique features, whether it's their voice, their personality, you know, so if their, their if, actions, what they, how they, what they do and shit. You know? Yeah. So if like an AI can emulate that and like recreate that person's consciousness, that who's to say like, what's, what's real and what's not. Well, because I'm not experiencing what that AI is doing. I mean, are you though? All I see of you is I, like, I'm not like, I, I can yeah. tell you I'm not because I'm not like, well, it's not, I, as far as I know, it's not happening too. So like, but this could all just be a playback, right? This could be, this could have happened like a thousand all, years ago. This could all be a bowl of soup. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> like how open-minded, you know what I mean? Like, you know, if you're open-minded every, every everything could be anything is anything, anything, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that's, and like bringing it back to like how much, cause this is like with conspiracy theories and shit, this is why I got to like limit myself. I got to fucking give myself little tiny carrots and then like call it a day. I can't eat the conspiracy ice cream, just a carrot, just a little, little piece at a time. Cause then I start like yeah, every, every, um, every solar eclipse, dude, fucking watch, uh, Alex Jones, like 10 minutes of them. Yeah. <laughs> give, give yourself the Alex Jones diet. Yeah. yeah, man. Like, but he's, you know, Alex Jones has been right a lot. That's what's fucking like scary. Like if, if we like, think about like 20 years ago, right. And, and someone said, JP, like, these are all the conspiracy theories. This is what's going to happen in the next 20 years. You'd have been like, dude, you're fucking nuts. Like, I don't fucking believe you. But like the world that we're living in now, where we know that the government's constantly spying on us, that's not like a conspiracy theory anymore. You know, they're constantly doing that, looking at us through our cameras and shit. Like all this shit, you, you would have been thrown in the fucking nut house for saying, and now this is just common knowledge. Nothing's like that weird about thinking like that. And like, you know, the whole, remember the whole big brother, oh, they're going to watch us everywhere we go. Like that's, that's all fucking yeah. happening already. Like it's not, it's yeah, not even absolutely. weird to yeah. think about it. Like 1984 is a documentary. Dude. Yeah. Like, you know, and who needs a microchip? We were worried about being microchipped. You know, we're carrying a fucking microchip and a tracking device everywhere we fucking go. We're in you a like, microchip. We're, we, we are a microchip. <laughs> yeah. no, we're but, all uh, microchips, man. Yeah. But, uh. Hey, chip and chip, man. Yeah. No. But, no. yeah, you start. That's what I'm saying. I got to fucking chill out For, because I. Yeah, I don't know, man. It, well, because it's like. Yeah, dude. It's like in, in infinite possibilities, dude. In infinite directions. And yeah, our, you'll our, never. There's so our, much shit that Our we'll brain or whatever. Out. Whatever our brain is, whatever our identity is, you, wherever our like actions and our free will comes from is such a limited fucking space. And I don't think it's meant to handle all crazy information and pure free thinking all the way out as yeah. far as you go with it. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, maybe the TV is God and and uh you know maybe the media is god well or we're all god but yeah. we're all living at a different time to to do what god wants to experience like sometimes god wants the jp experience sometimes god wants the tony experience sometimes god wants the tupac experience you know it's yeah. just uh but uh, but yeah i don't ever turn off you know well, God's God can experience them all at the same time. Yeah, I mean, our way of thinking about God is not even fathomable. Like, if God is the supreme entity that created the whole universe, there's no way that we'd ever be able to grasp God. You know, like that is just it's just not possible that we'd I mean, be able to have any type of understanding. If we're right, then we're then we have we're having a glimpse of it right now. Yeah, you know what I mean, like. So I think it is possible to, to like understand what God is. And yeah. I mean, but like yeah. it hurts your head, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, Cause 
I don't think you're we're designed to think that way, man. No. Well, we well, we're designed to have a unique experience. You know, we're designed to have I'm designed to have the Tony experience, you're designed to have the JP experience, so on and so forth, and that's what makes life uh, you know, the wheels the wheels keep turning. Yeah. Keep on <laughs> that's that's the whole that's the whole thing but um but yeah man i want to ask you what'd you say about them tigers <laughs> yeah yeah the tiger kings man that's what that's what they need to change their uh, name to yeah tiger king yeah yeah that's That'd be good. sexy that's but great. yeah man great. uh music wise because that's really i want to talk to you about that we want to chop it up had fun with the conspiracies but the music stuff that was the uh the glue oh one last thing i have a friend who uh right before the pandemic we were talking and we were pretty big on bernie you know we were really like bernie and shit we talked about him and she goes i think that you know like i think that just like everyone needs to like stop going to bars and restaurants and stuff for a little while you know and i was like well well, we'll, we'll, we'll all, lo- all of our friends will lose our jobs and we'll go yeah. insane. And she's like, yeah, but it's like something that's that needs to happen and is going to happen. And, and I was like, okay, that's weird, whatever. And then, <laughs> then, then like, bam, that shit happened, you know? Wow. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and then like, out, like a bunch of weird shit like that, you know? But what was the, what I was getting to a point about that something to do with shows maybe doing shows um yeah what was it maybe conspiracies because we oh, we're, we're in between oh, we're, about I'm, she's always like stop listening to these conspiracies she's like okay. she's like, conspiracy bad like i i had a <laughs> i had a magazine that like just discussed like the nature of conspiracies it didn't like tell you conspiracies but yeah. it was just, like this is like some observations about conspiracies and like what they are and what kind of effects they have and where they come from. And just like an, an analysis on conspiracies, a magazine okay. called, uh, I forgot what the magazine was called. It's called like some conspiracy term is just called that. And she, she'd see it and she'd be like, get that out of here and shit like that. You know? And then I was like, why are you into, why do you hate conspiracies so much? She goes, because they're all true. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, dude. Yeah. And like, I was like, oh, and it's like, so at the time I'm like, whatever, but like, it's something that I can't get out of my head now. Just yeah. Right. yeah, that's, uh. That was that was definitely a, a curve of the story. You threw a curveball at me. Yeah. You hit me with a twist. The plot thickened. Pew, pew, pew. Yeah. You sneaky, you sneaky guy, goddamn. Pop, stop talking about these conspiracies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, damn, with the with the Harry Wilson out there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, fucking music's music. dope. The music's been music's dope, and I'm getting back into it. I'm getting back into it. Yeah, man. So like a little bit of uh, like just kind of going back and, uh, you know, revisiting some shit, man. We've we've had a, we've had a crazy ride and uh, there's been there's been a lot of stories and uh, all that, you know, all that kind of stuff. What is some like if you if you think about like some not necessarily like highlights, I don't want to put this in a bad way, but not necessarily highlights that you're quote unquote like proud of, but like some crazy like epic nights or just wild shit that's happened through like music through like performing or just people you've met through um through the music like what are some like and i can edit i can edit names out if i need to at the end but oh word um shit man um god where that's a tough tough one dude you should have you should have Ask me this before, before the conspiracies no before we <laughs> before we met up on here oh no that's i mean i i have some ideas i have some things i can kind of segue with yeah no no totally i'm just saying like there's so many like oh what well, well, my brain can't click right to one right now uh well, 
I'll I'll point one that I'm that's kind of sticking out in my head. Okay. So there was a big show at Shamrock. Now this might be getting mixed up with a few different memories, but I'm just gonna I, I'm pretty sure how I remember it is right. And Trick Trick was supposed to perform, and you like something kept messing up. Like you were supposed to go on at a certain time, and then because of something to do with this show i don't know i'm not necessarily thinking it's trick tricks fault i don't know what exactly happened but you couldn't um you couldn't perform and everybody that came with you me included you know we're waiting we're getting more drunk more amped up as time's going on just more drinks more drinks more anger more hostility it's just like it's just building man it's 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 you could you could cut you could cut the fucking tension with a fucking samurai sword yeah and like and there's no like backstage area there. So I have to be like in a fucking small bar that has like 300 people in it. Yeah. You know, and everyone, when you're going on, yeah, when you're going on. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? And Getting these, amped and, up. Yeah. And these are people who aren't like used to the like like the actual promotion or organization and stage management of a show yeah especially a rap show yeah and at that point in the time i wasn't even i didn't even know much about it you know that was a little that was back when you know uh yes and it was just frustrating you know like i couldn't go on everyone when are you going on and and, and like yeah i couldn't go on until trick trick went on yeah they wanted that's what it was they wanted him around like i had to go on after Trick. yeah trick trick was opening up for you like what like like what like what kind of i don't see why trick trick would would care for that like there's a shit ton of people there for him too you know what i mean like that's not gonna like it's not like i'm gonna go on and everyone's gonna leave you know what i mean like put me on there dude like why you know but it was just a weird it was somebody's coked out idea i guarantee like whoever was helping that like they knew from shamrocks yeah. like that was kind of help like they were communications with this guy was like super coked out he's like you know what trust me on this let you go before jp i'm telling you because because he's got the crowd you need that jp crowd man so you go before jp like something tells me some shit like that like it was like some coked out idea like like it's one of those things that sounds like if you think about it, it's like oh that makes sense man like this is a good idea <laughs> this is so, a conspiracy dude uh, yeah no i'm t- i'm telling you man that's what, that's what i think but but yeah but basically what happened because you never ended up getting to perform if i recall correctly because yeah, i didn't perform man i didn't perform it took so like, long and I, then i ended up getting in a fight with that big fucking security guard whatever the fuck his name was like yeah the guy was oh, like two of stories tall. Got in fights that night, man. Yeah. A bunch of my friends got in fights that night. Yeah. And this guy tossed me out of there like I was Jazzy Jeff, man. He threw, like, I couldn't believe he could throw me that far. Like, he just fucking, he just threw my ass out. Dude, fucking... all the, yeah, the bouncers at Shamrocks are all super tough dudes, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that was, uh, guys. that was definitely a night um, that stands yeah. out. <laughs> Big strong men, big big strong men. They're all big yeah. strong men, strong men. Yeah, big, strong men. Uh, yeah, and dude, Dan, and Dan, and it was like when, when the wheels were off at that point. Yeah, you know, it, it's like one thirty. I haven't gone on yet. The promoter slash artist of the show, it was uh Mark Elliott. He's hasn't performed yet you know everything's behind schedule <laughs> oh yeah he hasn't performed yet i'm young i'm hungry i'm taking everything personal oh yeah um and i'm just like why am i up there dude and, like he's up on here top doing, of alcohol and doing his thing else. and people are like oh where's jp you know because yeah. i probably did have the most people there you know what i mean I'm oh not, yeah i'd have i'd have definitely gonna fucking, like i'm not gonna sugarcoat sure. that and, you know i had the most people and fucking um he it's like 145 he's the, like uh, talk that shit that's songs. what i like he's still doing his songs you know dan is supposed to be drumming for me and this was when dan was drinking he's so drunk he's like playing drums 
Like, while while that guy's, he's just up there playing drums while that guy's performing. You know what I mean? Like, oh, Dan like, was playing drums, playing wasn't the he? Drums, like, oh, like over it, but not even to his thing. <laughs> he's just up there jamming. And like, someone's like, get him off the stage. And, and Dan's like, fuck you, I'm drumming for JP. You know what I mean? Like, but <laughs> while really this that. track's playing and all this shit's going on, <laughs> and then like, trick tricks going on at like one. 50 and, and everyone and, and he's like yeah and he's doing a call thing with the crowd yeah and, and like people i got drunk friends they're like JP, yep, JP. Yep. And, and then he's like wait what who's that like yeah like he don't know me like yeah we, ain't, we hadn't met at that time he doesn't <laughs> probably know who's on the show yeah. he's a fucking boss you know what i mean he's yeah. like i get uh five i get a grand or whatever to fucking come here at fucking one of one forty five, you know what yeah. I mean? So like the whole thing's re- like revolves around him, you know what I mean? But yeah. like, uh, yeah, he like you know. And that was too like for the people who don't know. I know me and Joe kind of touched on this, but like how much of a disaster those rap shows were? Because really, what it was was. And I and I I don't mean to throw anybody under the bus, especially if you know these people personally, because I'm not singling anybody out. I felt like all these rap shows that were designed like this were a pyramid scheme. So you have like basically triangle plan. Yeah. Triangle plan. So you book like an obnoxious amount of rap acts. You tell each rap act they have to sell, I don't know, we'll say 10 to 20 tickets. In some cases, it could have been 50 tickets. I don't, you know, but it was like you had to basically each rapper had to sell X amount of tickets to perform and everyone's and so, energy and effort and, and like their, their like value as an artist is all being funneled up to a mid level like yeah. headliner who pr- probably get the same amount of people at a show as me, like given the same promotional tools, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, uh, like on a whim, bam, he's performing there that night. He's going to draw like similarly the same amount of people like as me. Cause it's like my home backyard and I, yeah. everyone there fucks with me on a personal level. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah. they all me I'm their, I'm their fucking horse. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and that's uh, kind of what, what ended up happening. And, uh, and that's and then, what, but then there's all these other people that, that don't need to be involved that are involved. Like, yeah, it should be me and trick trick you know what i mean like that's all it needs and like that's like that's how like uh like shows are in like the in the rock scene and like the punk rock scene in in the detroit fucking uh underground like music scene and uh just outside of rap rap shows all the other shows are just the way that they're put together like make more sense for me you know what i mean like yeah and that's why i just started doing shows like i think that was the last like i think that show. was too i, I think you were pretty much you're you know? pretty like, much done with it at that point and except yeah, for I mean, being twins and um my boys were the actual promoters of the show yeah you know everybody I mean? so doing. like so like i got taken care of you know what i mean i got put yeah. in on a, on a good time you know, I made money off of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I, I was able to take ticket sales and, and uh, convert them into unauthorized loans, basically. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, uh, and uh, it worked out. You know, like, no one was mad. They did a great job. You know, there was no, because they weren't the artists. Yeah. Like, the artists, the promoters weren't also artists that were, like, using this as a way to launch themselves yeah you know I mean? and like, yeah because like, they're, they're, they're not like sucking out like everyone's like draining like vampiring everyone's fucking energy to like make it theirs you know what i mean yeah. like it, whereas the shows that happened that i started doing after that were more um they seem more like natural you know what i mean they were more organic like well it didn't they didn't have 50 people on the fucking bill that you know had had five yeah more people on stage with them than they had to the show (laughs) you know what i'm saying like so that's the whole thing that whole kind of structure was a mess 
And it's just, it was, it was a bad scheme. Um, but do you think this that's is like paying dues? Out. Though I think that's like kind of paying dues, like, and not like it's because you could like follow that like show thing, and if you're really fucking good and you go at it, like, well, you yeah, you like graduate and you become like the person who doesn't need that shit anymore, or the person who can like capitalize off that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah, uh, it's but like it's a, still it's like a it's like a, a paying dues. Thing. yeah i mean you i know, guess it's kind of like i like to look at it you know like yeah well like, I, I you're, you're looking at it those, you're, i got you're ripped generous. off i got ripped off for three years and got yeah. uh got uh vampire and got, got like vampired or whatever you know what yeah. i mean got, like, yeah, got, leached like, trained, got leached off of you know what i mean yeah 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 i mean it's it's one thing that what i'll say i guess in defense of them because i still don't agree with the practice but if you're the one putting on the show and going through the promotion and putting the time in to make a show, yeah, I'm not ever gonna, who... I'm not ever gonna say that you shouldn't get paid for that. Um, but I feel like there's a way to, because what I, I feel like putting 50 rappers on a show is just like it, it looks too egregious to me. It's like it's uh, and there's more more rappers there than there are but that's people watching what rap, rappers. But that's what rappers want to do mo- a lot of the time you know so like that's what a rap show is you know like to an extent but it's like it's just stage man i think it's just poor stage management and like uh financial swindling you know what i mean like but do you think let me ask you this because this is what i want to ask you about this so do you feel like this happens more in the rap world because it's so e- it's so much easier to be a rapper than being a rock band so there's more the there's more rappers than there are people who want to see a local rap show. I mean, wherever there's a person who um like isn't mega talented themselves or like plugged in to like organic talents with followings, um and they want to force a thing to happen in which they make money, like that's like the most logical way to do it you know the way they do it the way they do it with the get openers to sell tickets and shit like that like it's it's a it's a sound business plan you know what i mean but but it it doesn't uh help nurture like like uh like talent and artistry you know what i mean and it's not yeah you know what i mean like do you get what i'm saying like i no, I because like, anybody we, can, and what happens a lot, and you know this, you're not that happened with bands dude. though. That like and you might not be hip to it, but there was like a whole like battle of the band circuit and like the same yeah. open mic thing that we were that we did with uh that that we were doing at like TNTs and shit that I used to do back in the yeah. day. They did the same thing with bands, the exact same structure of shit with bands, and the, the, the um and they'd have like fucking. Uh, 10 bands in one night and you know what i mean like and then they'd get like uh like what's an example like uh like a one-hit wonder fucking like (laughs) uh rock band i can't can't say papa roach because i think papa roach would still sell out a fucking no it was trapped i've been to one of those they had like trapped there or someone someone who had like one song in the late 90s yeah you know and and they would open up for these people you know same thing you know what i mean like it still and, and felt like, more official though. It felt like, and the battle of the bands, that's like a nationally known brand. Like that's not, yeah. you know, and then if you and people win, got big it's a money if they want it, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Totally. But no, I, I mean, it was like, it was like a wannabe versions of that. You know what I mean? Like, no, I know. I know that I'm sure it existed, but I, I mean, again, it reminds my, me of like a fucking uh, computer program, like, trying to throw a show you know what i mean yeah. like like that's what it reminds me of you know no, what I, mean? I mean i get i get the appeal from the promoter standpoint where you're just looking at a quick buck um but i guess my i i felt like it was kind of like uh like the housing market collapse of 2008 like and when you know 10 years before that the people in the real estate business banking agents everybody on every level 
was making out like bandits you know they're not yeah. they're not worried about how things are going to turn out but eventually if you're a hip-hop fan and you all the shows you get invited to like are 90 per, yeah 90 yeah. percent like it's people it's, suck yeah like you're gonna get disenchanted as a fan no one's like booking the the shows at, like no one's like um curating like a, a night of art you know what yeah. i mean they're they're herding bodies in and taking their money you know what yeah. i mean like like and the, yeah 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 they're not like fit. yeah they're they're doing it like with with a like a very corporate mindset yeah you know? like my opinion how it should have been done that would have been better maybe it can be done i'm saying it like if things can't ever happen again but is like you have you know kind of what you're saying about you know, like we'll say there's the top guy. This top guy is going to generate the most ticket sales. And then we'll have like guy at B level. He's going to get the second amount of ticket sales. And maybe there's number three guy that's going to get, you know, uh, 25% of the ticket sales or something like that. And then you can say, yeah. okay, we understand that there's a lot of upcoming artists that don't have any fan base. Um, but I know, I know like two or three artists that are talented. I know they're talented. And I know that they're not going to sell any tickets because nobody knows who they are, but they make good music and they're good performers. So I'm going to put them on the show. I'm going to let them each do one song, two songs, whatever it is, um, just so people can, just so they can help, you know, generate a fan base. And then eventually they're selling tickets too. And we're kind of, you're, it's, it's an upward mobility thing. You're saying, Hey, I believe in this product. I believe in these people. And it's going to, you know, eventually those shows with those same five people yeah. can, can start generating more revenue and more revenue, um, so on and so forth. But what happens is when you have well, the, only, system the only difference, the only, the only difference between that and like what you're describing, I feel like, is that someone with taste is, um, is, is uh, selecting uh the talent you know what i mean like someone with good good taste is selecting the talent yeah but, but like that same like um climbing the ladder thing like that was all that happened in that old fucking shit format and like it did get you somewhere if you fucking went through with it but yeah. the shows were just whack yeah so like they people found out quick that like that it wasn't a good time to go to these shows if they were going there for music yeah you know what i mean yeah and that's what i mean about it not being you gotta disconnect it it was just a disconnected it was disconnected from from art and culture and it was just more of like a fucking like oh but go ahead as you were continue though no but and another way too is like understanding because let's say you know okay you want to do the thing where you're like okay i'm gonna throw you know 10 artists on this bill they're gonna have to sell tickets because again i understand that you know there needs to be some money made what I think a trade-off would be is if you're an unknown artist, you don't have a fan base, you don't get paid at all. You know, you get paid zilch, but you get some stage time where all the tickets, because remember to come into Shamrocks, to come into the Ritz, to come into TNT's, any bar, you have to pay money to get in that door. You have to pay $10. Did you just say I, did you just I'm talking that shit. I'm talking that shit, JP. I don't get paid. <laughs> It's a, it's an internship. You got, you got to listen, but yeah, no, no, if, if you're, if you're an artist, if you're a brand new artist, you don't have any fan base, you yourself are not going to sell any tickets, then you don't get paid, but you're not expected to pay. Cause this is what would happen. This is my point during those shows. You really, you would prefer as an artist, you would rather there be more people at that show than rappers. I'm assuming, right. I'm assuming that's, yeah. that's the goal even if there was no money made, because at least you're rapping to potential fans, you're rapping to, you know, people yeah. who can, who you can get a following off of. Um, whereas what happens when it's all rappers. And again, this would happen a lot. They would just buy their own tickets. They would just say, okay, I need to sell a hundred dollars worth of tickets to perform. I'm just going to pay a hundred dollars, yeah. you know? So they're not actually the, the, uh, the goal was to bring more bystanders, civilians, into that venue but it's great that the promoter's getting his money no matter what or hers yeah. i don't want to be i don't want to assume gender here in this gender role um but it's great that they were getting their money no matter what but for the artist, promoter i know is 
trans dimensional. No, <laughs> what, what, what do you say? But yeah, no, I think I think I would rather there be more people there that you know didn't have to sell ten tickets to be there than you know than fucking. 50 people who are just performing and you're just, per, you're just performing for other performers. And you know, you know, you know, the you, ego. yeah. Or you like get a fucking job and save up some fucking money or like sell your fucking mixtape, get some money together, get 500 bucks together, go yeah. to a venue, fucking uh, book the venue and which should be free. But like, if you don't have any pull there, you might have to prove it. So throw yeah. them two hundred bucks. Have three hundred dollars for the fucking to pay this guy who you know is good and brings some people. This guy who you know is good and brings some people and hasn't just done a show and 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 that and that and then you fucking have a good show and fans are there and music is there and the venue's like, oh, you're dope, you know? Yeah. And, and then and then like. I mean, that's what I started doing. You know yeah. what I well, mean? Well, that's and that's, like, that's I found a smart it idea. To do that, harder to do that with like rappers from the suburbs, dude. Like, yeah. But do you? Here's my question to you with that. So obviously, that's a smart idea, and you did. You I had quit. I had fucking like a hundred, not a hundred, but like twenty five shows in a row that were packed. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, and were good shows and shit. You know, and then. Then I start getting asked to, then I was kind of like, a, I get asked to fucking do shit at Planet Ant when yeah. Froggy Fresh was doing a show. They're like, open yeah. up for Froggy Fresh, but, which was pretty fucking cool. Uh, like play the music festival, do, you know, I yeah. played a music festival and a bunch of people. I played uh, ButtCon, you know what I mean? And this yeah, was yeah. because I built, me and my friends, like, built a fucking thing that was based on real fucking uh energy and real like talent you know what i mean and so you do uh, look at that those kind of crazy like bad bad rap shows though as a position where you you're not you have no uh negative feeling you you feel like that was a legitimate starting point to get you to where like it helped you kind it helped mold your mindset in a positive you took positive yeah yeah, it it well it I would it was it's a power struggle because like when when you start off you don't know like how to get a show and you you those are one of the first guys you're gonna fucking meet and talk to like when you Google show how to yeah. do a show like that guy's face fucking pops up there dude you know what I mean like and, and, and you follow and you follow him you're you know 100 percent I mean? like, right though you know what I mean like so so it's like. You know, like so knowing uh, is half the battle. You just once you figure out how this fucking thing works, it's like, what is this guy doing that I can't do myself? Yeah, you know, like what's this person? And that's the whole corporate fucking stranglehold on everyone. And that and this goes outside of music to fucking everything. Everything, yeah. Is fucking someone doing something for you that you can do yourself takes your power away. Yeah, and it, and it degrades the quality of everything. But um, let's be let's be honest about that though. And this is and again, I'm not. I want to be. I want to be perfectly clear. I'm not trying to play the position of like victim or you know why wasn't this done for me? Like I I am a person myself that I I am a go getter. I'd like to think I am anyway. You know I always try to do everything I can do in my power to be better at something, improve on something. Yeah. Um, raise my my own worth or my value in a in a world but you know to play i guess advocate or you know uh just try to just try to sympathize with people every you're right everything that you don't know someone who does know is going to have an advantage of you but you can't know everything so this is like like I, i use the mechanic situation right and there was a point in time with my last car that shit was fucking going wrong with this thing on a weekly basis it got to the point where it was like a weekly basis and it was like and i was trying i was like okay i need to know these parts this part so i can know if someone's like fucking me over or not yeah but it got to the point where like i would i would feel like i knew as much about like i'd be like oh man i'm proud of myself i know all about these parts i'd take it into the shop they'd be like oh well it's this other thing now and it's like 
fuck. Like you can't like, there's no way if you don't specialize in a thing where you're getting paid to do that on like uh, just as a main thing, as a main job, you just, you'll never have enough time in the world to know what a mechanic knows, to know what a doctor knows, an electrician, plumber. Or, I mean, you can or, go down the list, right? Or yeah. But like, also if you, you can become, how, how do you become a specialist in something? You yeah. fucking be passionate about it and you get like, you get taken advantage of and you learn how to do it better. Yeah. You know? So I mean, I'm not saying you can't do that. I'm just saying you're going to have, there's going to be things where you just have to trust. You just have to you yeah. know, give up. No, that's, that's the learning experience, you know, yeah. and, you, and it, you could, you learn from that and turn into a butterfly or you, you stay a caterpillar, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, and, and that's like, you know, and that's just like, if you want to like get, success as defined by the corporate standard you know what i mean yeah. like if you're doing what you love and then then you won yeah you're, no, you're that's... Getting, getting paid or not really yeah you know what i mean um and you got your shit together you know what i mean like yeah i don't know well, no, and that's and that's a huge thing. And I was, uh, you know, me and Joe talked about this a little bit. I thought about this with some other artists that we talk that are in our kind of trivial. But you know, I look back on my time, like performing and like really like heavily invested in hip hop, like putting my heart and soul, blood, sweat, and tears, all that kind of stuff in it. And there was obviously there was a time where I was very salty about stuff and like, man, this didn't work out. I like put all this time in. I'm not like fucking. Britney Spears level famous. Salt, you know what I'm saying? So but important, man. It's important. Salt's important. Salt is yeah. the process. Salt, but you gotta you gotta have some pepper to balance it out. But looking back on it now, like I think about, you know, I look at the positive, like I got to do that. Like I did all this shit. I didn't get paid, you know, for it, or I didn't get paid dramatically for it in any sense. Yeah. Um, but a lot of people don't even do that. Like they don't even get on that stage they don't ever make that song they don't you gotta generate your own worth though yeah too. you know what i mean like unless like you're lucky as fuck and like your best friend gets a million dollars and is just like uh, you know what i mean like if you're born not into a shit ton of money you have to generate your own you have to generate your yeah. own you know what that's, I mean? that's pretty much it comes, what it, it is comes with the process you know what i mean like yeah. like and if you're getting ripped off, if you're, if you're, if you're work, if you're not getting your fair share of what you've generated, then you look up at the fucking, the head of the operation and you're like, okay, fuck you. I don't yeah. need you. You know what I mean? Like, and go do it. But if, and if you truly don't need them, you can go do it somewhere else on your own without them and yeah. get what you want out of it. Yeah. I mean, when you're working for someone else, you're on their, uh, you're on their payroll basically so you have to you know you're you're at the mercy of, of their hey, can, payroll. You re- can you rewind my last little fucking rant and just play it over again like three times <laughs> like right now <laughs> jamie 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 can we yeah jamie oh. jamie pull that shit up but um but yeah man so that's that's just like i said i don't i don't have you know I, i'm talking about stuff more from a trying to play like devil's advocate so to speak or look at things from a different perspective but i don't have any animosity towards it i get it i understand that what it is and i you know by no means if you're not if you yourself are not you should have animosity that's part of it dude but i mean you're mad about something doesn't mean you're mad about it forever you know what i mean yeah well i I had animosity i i was very you know i spent a lot of time even like swearing off the Detroit hip hop scene. Like I, I did that too, man. You know, but like I, was, I, I did the same fucking thing, man. That's I was I like, started. man, I'm fucking sick of this man. And part of it was, I was pissed at, I was just mad because all my rap friends weren't getting along. Like I was like, it was more like, I was like, man, like, why can't you guys get along, just man? Together, dude, if we just all came together. And That's got what my whole stage, thing was. If we just all came together and just got on stage together. Yeah. And and just did that show for no one. Come on, guys. No. <laughs> That's I, I was like trying to build like the new Wu Tang like, Clan. Like, a no, suburban like, rapper. Come on, guys, can we all just get together and like sell tickets to, yeah. to my release party with uh, <laughs> Young Buck? Yeah. <laughs> 
I like how you keep giving yourself a plug. I like, I love it. You keep using your own examples. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I. That's what I know. But you know. Yeah. No, it, you have you have your own. As true as it can be to me, you know, yeah. and I want to share my truth. You know. Yeah. Yeah, man. That's all. Yeah. That's all you have. You are. You are your truth. Mm-hmm. Um. And yeah, man. That's the uh... truth you seek, man. <laughs> oh, dude, I didn't know how dope Big Sean was, really, dude. Like, there's some sort of block. Yeah. That I, that I put up or whatever the uh, on Big Sean where. I was listening to his shit today, and one one of these songs, he said, "If we don't have the same vision, we can't ex- we can't exchange contacts." Yeah, that's pretty crazy. That's a wild line, dude. Yeah. No, he's got he's got a lot of sleeper, and that's what is. That's like you he's gotta be anointed. You gotta be anointed to a, to a higher fucking consciousness to yeah. fucking come up with that shit, dude. Yeah, like that is fucking. If we that's so dope, dude. Yeah, you know, but the what's if we can't if we don't have the same vision, we can, we can't exchange contacts. That is pretty. I mean, that's that's a crazy fucking line right there, dude. And what's crazy about that is like, how much sense would have that made sixty years ago? Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't think they had contacts then. But they, but they, they didn't have, have contacts in either way. Yeah, but contact still took place. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So. They were and, and you still shared things. Yeah. And you still had vision. But what it could like could it have still been a double an all inclusive double entendre that like verbatim like means the same thing yeah but a totally different thing but using the same words well you know isn't I mean? that like such an amazing thing to be like to be able to pull off where you're saying three things really in one line yeah like it's like that's uh, that to me has always been like just it, it's like a yeah, fucking super but, but they're but they're both as like cohesive they're both things uh, both lines like are like it's it's a double talk like double meaning or whatever yeah. double entendre double, double entendre, entendre. But or like, even a triple perfect. entendre if you look perfect at yeah Lil Wayne dude would do like had some like quadruple entendres yeah, you know what I mean that like unfold. You know, yeah, like, going. It's well, like I mean, I'm was good at that too. I mean, they, they, they a lot of those guys can do that shit. Eminem like, was not good at that, dude. <laughs> he would. He had some. He had some. He had some things. Like if you know, if you know, listen to I some mean, songs on recovery, like corny, dude. Yeah, but like it's not dope. But it wasn't like a dope thing, though. You know it what wasn't. I mean? like, no, I see what you're saying. You know what it wasn't I mean? like, like not, it wasn't like, like a jewel. Both lines it wasn't weren't fu- like both. Things that he's saying weren't like dope things. No, I, I know. He was just like proving saying. that like he could link the words together. You know yeah. what I mean? But, but he was, but the meaning and and authenticity of it's not there when he does. Yeah, it, and right? it's not a. You deep, know what I mean, uh, like it's not as deep as the context. The context. Dude, is- if we if we don't share the same vision, <laughs> we can't we can't exchange context. Dude. I'm getting that. I'm getting that put on a t-shirt for you. Dude. <laughs> No, oh, I mean that's an amazing oh line. I don't, God, I, don't dude. I, I I can't hate on it at all. But like, Big Sean's like that. Oh. And one thing I always said, and one thing I was really always trying to do as an artist is because I realized, you know, with with Drake, with J. Cole, um, you know, Lil Wayne, Jay-Z, like the apex of becoming one of the greatest rappers of all time is saying profound shit but doing it in a way that people just are, is a catchy song. Like people don't even realize on the surface that you're saying some fucking shit and then it hits your subconscious. And then you're like, hold the fuck up. What? And then like, so like that to me is like the fucking apex of becoming like a goat level rapper. Yeah. Like how many people heard that big Sean line and just thought like, he, he was, was just saying about, something. Yeah. He, was, he just thought he was t- talking about, uh, we can't, I'm not going to like give you my number if we're not yeah. going towards the same thing. Yeah. You know, I'm not going to give you my number if we're not going towards the same thing. But there's a way that you could say that where it also means something else that is totally like 
cohesive. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we don't share the same vision. We can't. We like if we don't have the same prescription, we can't. We're not. Well, we can't use the same contact lenses. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like how many? Like I. I Maybe because I wear contacts that, like, I was able to. <laughs> you took, that, you took it you know? personal. Yeah, and Big Big Sean used to work for uh, DOC Sexy Specs. That's where he started out. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> Specs Howard. He went to Specs Howard. Yeah. Well, he was boys with Mike Posner too. The Mike Posner thing, I think, put him on the most because Mike Posner put him on that uh, Cooler Than Me remix, and I think that like really propelled him to um i know the kanye thing happened well, i but think he was already uh like he was already like being developed by kanye like he had a fucking album before any radio play like a year or two before any radio play but the only way that i could find this album and probably on the internet i didn't look that hard but like it was on uh <laughs> it was on cable like i had some weird cable where, where you could like go it through was a cable like, album yeah where you could like go through and, and find these artists no i know what you're songs, talking about yeah you know what i mean like yeah i forgot what that was exactly. i wonder if that was finally famous i thought that was his first album but maybe there was an no, album this was like that. this was bef- way well before that dude and wow. it was like but it was like good music he was talking about good music and and things like that you know what i mean so yeah it was like he was under development you know what i mean like yeah well, that's what's crazy about that shit. Like, even getting a record deal, and I talked about this with that dude, uh, Samson. Shout out to Samson Schulman, who uh, was an A and R at Interscope. Not trying to name drop and be a be a fame whore or anything, but um, tag him, dude, tag him. Yeah, tweet tag him, him, bag him, and tweet tag him. him. Tweet him the link. Tweet yeah, and I and link. I gotta shout out his podcast because he'll be upset if I don't. So Frankie uh, Biggs, uh, Frankie connection. Sharp, I'm shout out, <laughs> shout out to Samson Schulman with. Uh, connection is magic. That's his thing. Check that out. He he has amazing interviews with artists and A and R's and all that kind of stuff. But me and him talked about like how we just got to pray that he's watching right now. What'd you say? He just got to pray that he's watching right. Yeah, now. yeah. Like he's he's watching this in the future. Um, but he, we were talking about how like even get as hard as getting a record deal is. That's like not even. That's like a quarter not even half the battle. That's like a quarter of the battle because after you get a record deal, then the label has to decide if, and when they want to schedule you to release an album. So you got to like, they'll give you the money to go record an album. And then it's like, it's kind of like, if you make a movie, there can only be so many movies released for theater schedule. I mean, you work in a movie theater, so you might know a little bit more about that than I do, but there can only be so many movies released at a time. And they, they trade albums the same way when you're on a big label. So if you're not like already one of the big names, it's, it's harder to even get out there. Um, And then if you even, they'll typically have you release a single first, if that single doesn't catch fire, then it's really hard to convince them to go through with releasing the full album. And then if you release the album and it doesn't catch fire, you're not getting, (laughs) you're not getting that sophomore album deal. So you're kind of like, it's, there's so many things that like have to go right. They keep you on the label and like, have you like, like open up for someone or go on a tour and try to generate you that way. Like some labels like do extra shit, you know, it depends. Yeah. One thing he told me that was interesting though, he said that it's a myth about the record deal money, like how a lot of artists will say the record labels keep you in debt. And he said that that's very, that's a very big misconception. He said in some cases, like sometimes getting a record deal can almost be like a lottery because if like an, if a, if a label says, Hey, we're giving you a million dollar record label, a record deal. And you end up like, getting dropped before you put that money into an album you just got paid a million dollars they don't take it back you don't owe them the million dollars yeah or if they give you a million dollar budget and you only spend a hundred thousand well now you pocketed nine hundred thousand so he said that's what a lot of artists would try to do um a bank even if you're even if you're like rich pretty rich even if like you're a millionaire there's an advantage to like signing to a record date label they like they're 
they, you 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 could use them to your advantage. You know what I mean? Whereas like they take the risk, kind of. Yeah, thing, you know yeah, I mean? for like, sure. Well, that's but, that's more what it what it is. But I think things towards the end of him being there, once the streaming shit started getting like way more, uh, you know, part of the part of the music industry. He he said the the re- working for a record label, things started getting tighter and tighter, and they stopped taking as much risk and. Um, you know, because being a record label today is probably not near as profitable as it was 10 years ago, let alone 20 years ago, let alone 30 years ago, you know. Well, I mean, probably not, but I don't know though, like you, we'd have to look at like streaming revenues and like how much money is actually being pulled in here. You know what I mean? Like, well, yeah, but you know that uh, you and I both know, even if you're like Gwen Stefani, all these big artists have complained about the stri- what they actually generate from streaming. So I don't think, I, I mean, again, I'm not saying boo hoo hoo, Gwen but like, Stefani. Do they, but, but, but do they generate a shit ton less than when they sold albums? Because I know like if you sell albums, you only get like a dollar or two an album after fucking everyone gets their fucking cut. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but a dollar to, I mean, if you think about it, a dollar, let's say uh, $2 an album and you sell a million albums, you made $2, $2 million. Yeah, but, but if like, you sold a million albums, you probably got a billion streams, dude. Yeah, but you're not, that's the problem with the streaming though. You're not actually selling the albums. You're just getting streams of a song and typically- Yeah, but you're getting a lot more of these smaller dividends. You know what I mean? I, I just wonder- Well, you can, you can, keep, that, you can keep regenerating I, I wonder for- for the same amount of uh, like success in an artist, you know, with the same amount of cultural relevance, the same amount of like spin, so to speak, I wonder if they're making less. They're probably making more. Well, I think there's a way, you know, because I guess the what the upside of streaming is, is that every time you're basically, it's a royalty. Every time, whether it's a regular person, a DJ, a nightclub, it's a royalty anytime. Technically, that's what getting paid off streaming is. You're getting paid a royalty every time your song is played. I think what the issue is, is that back in the day, if you got signed, not only would you get that $2 an album, even though it wasn't 18, that wasn't the full price, right? People, a bunch of people got to get paid off that album. But then yeah. you got all your tour money. You got all your merch money. That was a given back in the day with a record deal. They did not touch your tour money. Um yeah. They like and front then, it, well, sometimes it depends though. Though sometimes they would like front the money, you, you know, they, they it's basically like they will, what you get like a loan basically to go on tour, like, right? I think, I think it's part of like, you know, I, I think when you get that record deal, like you can put like a budget into like um, the tour bus, probably renting. At, I, the the record deal is a deal, like you negotiate it, like you would yeah. like. So you'd like oh, yeah. ask the label, hey, will you pay for my tour? You know what I mean? Like, will you fuck yeah. the tour? You know what I mean? Like, will oh, you yeah. do this and promote this and shit, you know? Yeah. Um, no, I'm sure. Yeah. And there's all those different factors. There's a lot of standardized. There's a more standard version of a contract, I think, that you're talking about, which is probably a more prominent one. You know? Yeah. Well, obviously, if depending on the artist, kind of like going back to what you said earlier about being even an underground artist, the more notoriety you have, uh, the more less your value you need, is worth. Yeah, and the less so, you need from a label, but but you could still probably profit, uh, it, you know, benefit from being on the label. Yeah, well, it's no different than, you know, being able to play a venue that you're going to get paid for for being able to play a venue that you're going to sell tickets at yeah. that you couldn't do on your own. So you're going to have to split that money with the venue but you're going to get more money than you would if you didn't play at that venue. And I think the record label, it's, it all just scales up really as, as you climb up that ladder, everything scales up and you can use, you know, the scenarios being similar, but I I feel like back then though, in the nineties and the eighties, whatever, as an artist, you had three revenue streams. You had the touring, you had physical album sales, and then you got royalties where now you really are only getting royalties because the label, if you're signed to a label, they get a cut of the, you know, because you've heard of the 360 deals. They get a cut of your merch and your touring now. They get a cut, obviously, of album sales and they get a cut of your streaming as well. So I don't think that they would make more money than they used to make unless- 360 deal. 
360 deal, it mean they call it a 360 deal because now the record label gets a piece of every dimension of your the income you earn as an artist. So yeah. they get a cut of the touring, they get a cut of the album sales, they get a cut of the streaming. Every pass, any dollar you revenate, rev, uh, generate as an artist, they it get a cut of. Full what'd you say? It all comes full circle. Full circle. Yep. So <laughs> that's that's why they call it that. So that's essentially the difference of it, but. If you can, um, if you can generate enough of a following as an independent artist, then you'll end up making a lot more money. So I think that's where the difference is. I think if you can, with with the days of streaming and internet, you have a better chance as an underground artist of reaching more people than you maybe did back in the day. Yeah. Um, but you have to generate. I mean, you'd have to you have to generate enough of a following to where you're gonna be filling up decent sized venues on a regular basis getting decent streams on a regular basis and like yeah you know so and, it's, the, and the labels you know labels are still the ones holding a lion's share of those contacts that that get you more streams that get you yeah. public publications that get you more uh clicks you know what i mean on yeah online you know the what PR, i mean are like, the agents yeah, the, yeah the like marketing the, it, it and it's just like some of those uh old style label people like adapted and like went with the went with the industry you know and like and like kept those contacts and stuff and in some in a lot of cases you have brand new players that were just more aligned with like tech industry that became those people you know what i mean yeah well also spotify apple music these streaming companies have kind of become the new record label because they'll sign artists to an exclusive deal with them. And like Drake, like it was a big, big thing when Apple Music launched, they signed exclusive rights to Drake for $20 million. And so basically, Dr. Dre too. Yeah, Dr. Dre. Well, Dr. Dre like sat on Apple's board after he sold them beats. So he's, Dre was in a whole nother fucking level. Did they ever, did they ever use any of those beats? Did they drop, did they drop some songs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this guy, this guy, this guy is a character. But but yeah, man. So it's a it's a crazy ever changing industry. One and, moment. Uh, put me on the pause. No, I, th- I mean I'm still here, dude. <laughs> but um, yeah, man. It's uh, it's crazy times, and yeah, man. We've definitely had some crazy stories. Um, and just to kind of just to kind of bring it back, because I told you I would. Uh, oh, we got the ice cream on deck. We got the Jerry uh, Jerry Springers. Yeah, no, Ben and Jerry's uh, American Dream, dude. Stephen Colbert's uh, ice cream. It's been a brand for about fourteen years now, dude. Oh, we're doing sponsorships now. Yeah. <laughs> the spoon. <laughs> I shouldn't have expected anything. <laughs> Are you gonna be able to eat that with that? I need to see how this is gonna work. All right, there you go. I put it in the freezer. So it's too hard. It's too hard. I gotta see. Yeah, you gotta hit it with the mic. See, I hit mine with the microwave, like for thirty seconds. Hit it with the microwave for thirty seconds. Get it to break it. You know, break apart a little bit. Yeah, I don't fuck with the microwave, dog. No, you you don't want those rays. No, no, I think you can protect from them rays is tin foil. Yeah. So I'll wrap it in tinfoil. That's in that's how they read your mind, man. And that's what's fucking that's what's crazy about the moon landing. Oh god. <laughs> so like I used to not I used to never like I used to never participate in the like fake moon landing theory. Like I was like, no, like the moon landing is too important. That was like on national television. Like there's no way that could have been fake. Like I never bought into it. And then the flat earth theory started coming about. And obviously on the surface, I was like, no, that's ridiculous. Like these people are trolling. Like there's no way they actually believe it. And then seeing like how serious and like determined these people were about this, you know, you, you don't have a choice, but to think about it. Right. So then I start putting these two theories together and I'm like, flat moon, (laughs) flat moon. (laughs) Yeah. Well, no, like it's not that the moon landing was the moon is flat. No, it was flat moon. Yeah. And it's not that the earth is flat. It's just, yeah. this is, we're not actually on earth. This is a simulation. So if you like, think of like when you're playing the Sims, the Sims is flat. 
Like it's not like they're not in a round world. They're on your computer screen. So it is technically flat, right? So like if we are in a simulation, then that would make sense that the moon landing was fake and that the earth is flat. So they're all like those theories. If you connect them, they all fucking make sense, dude, is what I'm saying. Like, like, so, you know, all you got to do is just like, think about this shit for like five seconds and it all, you, you like make sense of all of it. Yeah. That's why it's so dangerous, dude. Cause it's all true. Yeah. It's all, it's all true. And then we're just, we're just living in the simulation. It's a dope ass simulation. I'll tell you that. Dude. Yeah, no, I'm not, I'm not mad at it. Like uh cypher in the matrix, which is a badass name, by the way, this dude's name was cypher. Oh yeah. yeah. That's, that's pretty badass. And uh, you know, he decided to eat the steak and fuck the hooker at the end. He's like, I, I, why would I not want to eat the steak and fuck the hooker? Like, or I could be fucking living in miserable, cold ass, fucking living underground, you know, I in mean, a weird spaceship thing. What a perfect fucking uh, metaphor, though, for for what what in in our base reality, what it would be like if we um, disconnected from the matrix, you know, the system, yeah. the you know what I mean, the the media and the corporations. You have to go live out in the fucking woods and you know rough it out. You know what I mean? Yeah, is dope. There's there's so many cool things in this matrix that don't exist out there, and they'd be real hard to let go. You know? Yeah, I mean, a lot of people who do let go seem to be happy though, man. I watched this documentary about this uh, this gay dude. Not that it matters that he's gay. Well, I think it does matter that he's gay because. His preacher dad kicked him out of the house when he was young because he was gay. And, uh, but he was like an educated dude. He like went to college and everything. Oh, like you that. better be real careful what you say right now. <laughs> and, uh, and he had a good job and like he started taking, like, started, started hiking and just staying out in the wilderness longer and longer. And eventually he just decided, oh, I'm not going to pay for my apartment anymore. I'm just going to live in a cave in a cave and uh he just he just started living in a cave and and at first he was still going to work right so he would wake up in his cave go to work work his nine to five shift and then go back to the cave right and he's like well i'm only working to generate money to live somewhere but if i don't need to generate money to live somewhere then there's really no point of me working at all or participating all your time at that job yeah so he just ended up quitting his job it's the documentary shows him like throwing the last of his money in a phone booth. And like, he's like, I officially am not participating in the society. This is you your know, friend. Like, no, this was a documentary. And he's gay. Yeah. Okay. So just so you, just so you have all the facts. Okay. Um, but yeah, so that's like, but he was like having a ball, man. This guy was super happy and totally disconnected. I was going to say, if he's your friend, dude. You need to take me by his cave, dude. Yeah, no, I mean, I'll, I mean, I'll see if I, we can. I'm sure we can find his cave on Google Earth. Oh yeah, you know? yeah, and, we probably can, dude. And Google Earth is, shows that the Earth is flat if you think about it. I mean, it's all. Is, is it just perspective or what, dude? You know what I mean? Well, you're looking at it on a computer screen. <laughs> yeah. So Google Earth, I mean, that's you're looking at the Earth. So I, I, I just think that, you know, you could look at it that way, man. But um, it is but, flat on paper. Yeah. If you if you look at it like that. Yeah, absolutely, man. But even the posters. What, what if you're looking at it through VR goggles? Yeah. Well, that's what they say. It's not flat. That's what so they say, though. Our eyes are just VR goggles. Is that what they say? Well, think about it. Like, like, like a lot of people will use the airplane scenario like oh when you look out like the airplane you could see the curve of of the planet right but yeah. if you've been in an airplane you know that those those windows are shaped like circles yeah so they're gonna give that circular perspective you know why don't they just put straight windows on a on an airplane you know i'm sure there are some right I don't know. I've never seen it. They're all circles. No airplanes with fucking straight windows. No, I've never seen it. I think they're all circles. And does that is that really what gives it the perspective? I mean, has that been like has that been fucking like fleshed out, or does it just make sense? 
it, 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 I think open, it makes sense. An open think... conspiracy mind. It just makes sense. Could be true, but there's a way to fucking prove it. Yeah, but we need to, to prove it. You need a plane with straight windows. Though. There's a million planes, dude. Someone just go do it. Yeah, someone fucking put straight windows in a plane. Not yeah. those gay windows. Straight windows, dude. Yeah. Those heterosexual straight windows. windows. Straight windows, dude. <laughs> yeah. We need we need to get to the bottom of this. Yeah. What's a what's a conspiracy theory that's not too crazy that you like you'll like be like firm like okay this is true. Uh Osama bin Laden and Obama, Barack Obama are the same person. Ah, uh, that's a good one. No, I, no, I don't think that that's like one hundred percent true. I, I just think that's a good conspiracy. It's yeah, fun. well, that's okay. I should have said like one of your favorite ones. So it's fun, yeah, you know. There's yeah, one like uh, like Michelle Obama is a man. Yeah, you know? like that's a that's a popular one. Yeah, that's an interesting one. It, it's like pretty goofy and fun. Uh, there's a John Lennon and Paul McCartney were dating okay look and look up that one that one there's a lot that one definitely that one. no that, that sounds one's good super fun. that's super fun dude uh yeah, i can see that one conspiracies are dope dude they're just yeah. like fucking yeah they're just they're kind of like riddles if you like yeah. just funny things to like they're play so with in your head. Dope. like I, there's nothing wrong with them like whatsoever i don't think unless like i got one for you you're running out here trying to like be an evangelist about it and like, yeah. Oh, like oh yeah yeah if you if you believe it to like the the ninth degree i don't believe any of this stuff i don't you even believe it you're reality. scared about it and you're yeah like if you're letting, that, if you're letting it control you yeah i got one for you that's though. not good i got one for you but this this hasn't even been like i haven't seen anybody else come up with this but it just makes sense to me oh so, this, like, is a, this is uh exclusive this is exclusive, bro. This is like dude, only only up, I have thought about dude, conspiracies, this. Conspiracies, dude. Like we should watch have mixtape, like yeah. Drop, drop nobody music. else, nobody else has thought about this. So uh so 9-11, right? So it's taking it back to 9-11. So <laughs> I'm just joking. That's, that's all this guy talks about. It's 9-11, yeah. this, 9-11, that. But um, but yeah, so. So everybody, you know, it's it's pretty mainstream to think 9-11 was an inside job. There's nothing new. There's nothing original about that. It's so embedded in our consciousness that I would, I think statistically, at least a third of the population believes that. So it's almost boring to even talk about that like it's some profound thing. At oh, this really? Point. Is that high? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's, it's huge. Um, probably the same level of people believing the JFK conspiracy about him getting assassinated by the CIA um but anyway so that's how many people think covid's fake yeah i mean it's uh i'm sure there i'm sure there's a lot of correlation but so september is one so it's september is three months after july right so what happened july 11th three uh three months before 9 11 the biggest terrorist in american history got executed timothy mcveigh so Timothy McVeigh, who was a hero to right-wing extremist terrorist, right? I mean, people who planned the Oklahoma City bombing, right? Yeah. People who uh, planned a bunch of other things before that and were, were it's knowledgeable, it's known by the FBI that they were planning and even they wanted to strike even harder than the prior attack on Oklahoma City. So their hero, Timothy McVeigh, is getting executed on July 11th three months to that anniversary september 11th happens and the only terrorist that have done because remember oklahoma city bombing before 9 11 was the biggest terrorist event that had ever happened in american history yeah when did that when did that happen when did that take place that happened in like 96 i think it happened okay, so uh, he was on trial for well, whatever he was I, on trial and then he was on death row you know how like when you go to death yeah, row yeah. you don't you don't get executed right away you know, there's a whole, you know, but they, they executed him pretty quickly. There's some people who've been on death row for 20 years. So it's, it's, it's almost should be called retirement road. Yeah. All right. Anyway. So, um, but yeah, I mean, there's a bunch. Oh, he of was, I, he was a hero. Cause I, I, I didn't follow him. I'm not saying he was a hero to me. I'm just saying to the right, like the right wing extremist, like 
don't trust the government kind of crew like yeah. timothy mcveigh you know you got to remember this kind of world right like the whole thing the dave koresh with yeah. the waco that was that had a there was timothy mcveigh was at that event okay when when the government came in and like killed all those people in waco so that Whoa. triggered timothy mcveigh to like realize there's a couple events that triggered timothy mcveigh to plan out his thing but that was like the fucking straw that broke the camel's back he's like these people have to be stopped like you know they're fucking out here just killing innocent americans and all this kind of shit there was some other thing that happened before that where uh in some, reference to who koresh uh, say it again in reference to who david koresh david koresh was the one who led the cult at wake who's he saying needs to be stopped to the mba uh, the government. So he was, he was really like the government, like the United States government. Yeah. Basically okay. he felt, he felt like the government was, was getting out of control and just corruption with corporations and all, you know, the typical shit you'll hear on a regular basis now, but this was something that was not in mainstream American consciousness in terms of people talking about it publicly. Well, he then was how is he, uh, then how is he, Oh, how is he in the psyches of these right wing extremists to begin with? Well, he was, he was there was these right-wing extremists before he did his thing but he was part of that whole like group with like you know he was linked up with militias you know you heard the whole thing about how he actually trained with what he was going to do with the michigan militia and other militias he worked with so all these militias all these super heavy duty leave me alone government i want to live on my own with my guns you know all these people were getting stirred up about you know the government going to come in and like do some heavy duty shit take your guns away like put everybody in fema camps like people they were thinking about this shit like long before alex jones or like any of these oh, internet things right so they were thinking about this shit for a long time and that got them all crazy um to where they were you know attacking the government with violence and then timothy mcveigh like sees, oklahoma city yeah was so, that the, was that the one or was there other uh, that was the biggest one that was the biggest thing but there were other smaller ones there were smaller there? things i believe yeah so there was there were smaller things that happened Look right up jamie <laughs> but the, pre the what makes it hard though is because they were a domestic terrorist organization they weren't like isis or the taliban where they said we're isis we're the taliban right they just they didn't call themselves a group so it's really hard to piece all these thing to do. If yeah. You're a fucking, if you're a, <laughs> that's like, that has to be like, like somewhat manufactured by fucking media. Dude. Oh like, yeah. Well, why yeah. The Cause it's fuck would you like, if you're like trying to do this, why would you, and you are this like terrorist group. That's like, why would you say we are this group? Yeah. <laughs> like, what the fuck, dude? Look for us. Yeah. We're, we got this flag. We, you all know, wear the, a, we all wear the same hat. Like, yeah. what? Come on, dog. Yeah. No, that's that's super silly. But but yeah, it made them super hard to like keep track of and how many people were actually involved. Like they still don't know. Timothy McVeigh, there's only two people who actually got caught with the Oklahoma City thing. Uh, Timothy McVeigh was the main perpetrator, but a lot of people who investigated it were like, there's no way just these two guys could have pulled this off. This had to be planned by so many people, people who actually knew, uh, you know, the access to this building, all this kind of shit. I mean, there's, there's so some cool of like uh, links that you can send me. Uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go back. I'll, I'll get back into it and say, cause I, I linked all this shit together. And there's, there's so it. many, there's so many coincidences of, like this shit kind of having a lot of similarities because what even is um timothy mcveigh was influenced remember in 1993 someone drove a van into the world trade center yeah so he was he got that idea from that incident right yeah and so then he commits because at that point that was not you know that was an event but i don't think it killed that many people the Oklahoma City bombing was the big before 9-11 was the biggest terrorist event to happen on American soil. You sound like you're promoting for it. The biggest <laughs> terrorist event to happen on American soil. Come to this event. There's gonna be balloons. There's gonna be rappers. There's gonna be strippers. Oh, it shows. <laughs> hey, 
<laughs> but but yeah, man. So so hey, it's hey, if you keep talking, I will be able to hear you. I'm just gonna go in this room for a second. Okay. Yeah. Um, and now I feel weird because I'm just talking to an empty room. Um, but yeah, man, there's like there's a lot of fucking weird connections between them. And what my like to get to like my final punch or my point is that everybody who believes in the 9-11 conspiracy theory believes that whether it was Cheney, Bush, or the administration really wanted to go to war with the Middle East. They wanted an excuse. Uh, they, they needed some kind of reasoning. So what I ultimately think in this conspiracy is that Timothy McVeigh's cohorts, you know, the people who were left over from that, uh, from that group, or even people who were inspired by what he did and angry by him, who they thought was a hero, being killed by the government were there how many people were there but that's that's what i'm saying they don't they they still don't know because they how was this information like how did he get his like word out and shit well he was he was was networking he was pretty much networking with all the militias he was networking with the waco people all these kind of groups that were i guess quote unquote white right-wing extremists i guess you could say so he was he had a big network of all these people yeah. So he had, so it was a pretty wide variety of, you know, people involved. It's just he and one other person only got caught. But anybody who looks into that, you know, we're talking about FBI. Everybody's like, there's no way only two people could have pulled this off. So, um, so basically what I think happened is that in the theory is that the people left behind from his organization or new people who are inspired by it teamed up to the saying hey we need to pull off an even bigger thing and they caused 9-11 but what happened was um you know the government or the bush administration was like well if we say that like white guys that are americans cause this that's not really going to further our agenda much right so we need to pin this on someone else we need to put pin this on someone in the middle east so we can go to war and stuff like that so that's what i think they were so ready for it they like um i i feel like they were so ready to pin it on the middle east like they 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 were like they knew who did it like right after it happened oh yeah yeah and there's uh there's a lot of weird things there's the whole thing uh you know like and that's why i got to kind of refresh myself when i was really getting into the 9-11 stuff like the the saudi arabian people that they say were on the planes were still alive like there's record of them still being alive after the incident which wouldn't be possible if they flew themselves into a building. Also, the, it's very easy to like spread that rumor that they're still alive. No, or, I I or get mis- it. Or put misinformation but, that they're still alive. Like, yeah, how do you know? Well, that, what I'm that, talking that, about that, is there's there's some type of there's some type of records of things that people have pulled up. And yeah, again, what yeah. somebody fucking photoshopped some. They records. could they could have like, right. Oh, there's no records. You know what I mean? No, I know. You gotta understand saying. how how deep how easy misinformation is. Oh no, I it, agree. Especially with you. if you know how it is. Like I tricked thousands of people into thinking I was in a fucking emo band, dude. Yeah. And like <laughs> I could have faked that into existence as a real thing had I gone. That was the whole plan of it and i just never i just didn't go through with it but it's fucking if if you if you view things a certain way it's easy to do like if you have the right you know like hollywood ask like authenticity you know what i mean oh yeah you can pull anything off for sure yeah to make that's that's why again i don't like i'm not letting this you don't see a thing behind my uh, green screen, at least that I'm showing you, of all these red lines connecting <laughs> all this shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So yeah. I'm not like, to me, it's, again, not trying to make light of 9-11 or anybody that died. That sucks. That's horrible. But, you know, it's it's a fun thing. It's like a riddle. It's like, okay, like yeah. I, I'm going to think about this. It's fun to move these puzzle pieces around, see where it lands. And the reality is none of us will ever really know. None of us will ever know the truth. There's no some way. Some of us might know, know some truth. Some of us might learn some of the truths. You well, know people I mean? super like, high up in the gut. I mean, there's some people who might know something, but even, you know, I've, I got so obsessed with that shit that like I dug into every place that I, as a civilian would have access to. And it's just like, it almost seems like it's purposely meant to confuse you. 
Because you'll find a lot of coincidences and then it'll be like, well, if this happened, then this kind of disproves another pot, another thing. And it's just like, it all, it all collapses on itself. Yeah. You ever think that, uh, oh, no, you ever, you ever think that your ability like that that notion you get that like it's too like it's placed there to mislead you like it doesn't make sense and it's put there to mislead you what if like that's just like the best your brain could do to interpret the actual madness of it and you're just designed to like to have a solution to to know why but like there's no but there's no real like the, it's so chaotic that like even the higher up and ups have no idea what's like really going on. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Well, also when you really understand the government, the government itself is splintered off into so many different departments that all have their own agenda. So this idea that the government as a whole is plotting anything is ridiculous. Because- yeah. And that the government is a whole, like, yeah, like one thing there's, so many different uh yeah like you said sec- uh sectors, sectors departments sectors of there's it, private um, contractors and not even private yeah. contractors like military I think wise most people when they're like government they government they usually yeah. like the cia yeah you know I mean? but like, like the cia the fbi the nsa they all have their own agendas and a lot of times they beef with each other over shit like it's not like uh they're by no means like uh on the same side all the time or even you know maybe likely like they're they they have a lot of issues so because- timothy mcveigh whatever like like got, got a missile or his people you know they got like to a missile shot it at the pentagon and then the pentagon quick tried to cover it up flew planes into the fucking twin towers no i think so i guess to elaborate the, the, pentagon, the pentagon definitely got hit with a missile like no questions asked but I think that the McVeigh people, they hijacked the plane. I don't think they had access to a missile. I think they hijacked the plane. And I think the gov- like the Pentagon was thinking quickly, like, oh, shit, we got to. Well, they, they had to. I think they had to know what was going on. They probably had intel that shit was. They knew he was going to do it, man. They were like psychically linked to him with all the fucking. Uh, well, ass- remember, though, remember <laughs> that the, the Air Force was planning a terrorist preventive training with the fucking with their jets with their pilots the day that 9-11 was happening no because they knew it was gonna fucking happen and they were actually fucking trying to prevent it from happening yeah or yeah whatever the case is but yeah (laughs) but yeah i mean there's so many different weird things so they knew some shit was gonna go down either way whether they wanted that shit to go down encouraged that shit to go down to further an agenda or not remains to be seen but the whole thing of why 9-11 is even a conspiracy in the first place is because pre-9-11, to, to bring it back to before 9-11 and the world before 9-11, you know, the world felt a lot more innocent. Like the idea of the of something bad happening that could actually infa- impact us as Americans and devastate, like three, kill 3,000 people like that. Do you that. think that's, that's you as a kid? And well, like I the, think, the world I think it's, it's me as a kid. Innocent. The world wasn't that innocent to older people, maybe, because they seen fucking calamities with fucking assassinations of presidents and and people going to Vietnam for no reason and shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, but I think that that that's... happened, dude. You know what I mean? Like, no, they. I'm not, and I'm not disparaging that people before that saw assassinations and crazy shit, but. A sad, I think you know, like you're interpreting it as a youngster, dude, that way. Yeah, but I think a lot and of people me. still did. I think yeah, our age. Yeah, but older people, I, th- I think that it's, you got to remember too, it's not like everybody fucking went to Vietnam. And then even if they went to Vietnam, it was still, and not to, again, make light of this shit, but they were in the military. They themselves were soldiers in a war. It wasn't that Vietnam came here. You know what I'm saying, which I think is a big important difference of you know your life being killed by you know in an act of battle or an act of war as a civilian, not as a soldier, not to disparage soldiers losing their lives, but I think that's the difference. And I think 
what happened is that we, or, or you could say my generation, me, whatever felt like, how could we be so safe? And then all of a sudden something that dramatic happens. And so the only way to rationalize it is like, because you're, you're, th- you're being ignorant to the fact that there's no way anybody we're so strong and we're so powerful. There's no way anybody else on the other side of the planet could do this to us. So who could do this to us? Well, that means only we could do this to us. So I think that's really what drove a lot of people to think that way, because it was impossible for us to wrap our head around this being possible from someone else, especially someone as small of a group as like, you know, Al Qaeda or the Taliban. Um, Like it just felt like, like, you know, how could this have happened? It just felt impossible. So that's what I think. Yeah. And I don't know if you felt that way. I mean, I can't speak on behalf of you. I didn't, I, I never, I don't, that doesn't feel like a familiar like notion, you know, at all that like, that's why I didn't believe that's why I thought it was fake or like there was like misinformation, you know, with nine 11, you know? Yeah. But that's how you would react if you did feel that way. You would react the same way. Yeah. Yeah, and obviously I can't speak on behalf of every human being, but that's, I feel like for me and I feel like a lot of people, that was the case where it was just like, this is, there's no way that another group of people could ever do this to us. Like it's, uh, but, you know, it's just because it hadn't happened yet. You know, so yeah. that's really you you only live in the world that you've existed in. I don't know what it was like to live through Vietnam, the 60s, World War Two. All that shit is just fucking movies to me. Like it's yeah. like I, I have no fucking comprehension of it. Just like my grandkids will not have no comprehension of this. You know, it's only gonna be in history books and shit like on the yeah. internet. Like, yeah, it's like I wonder what like once you're gone once the people who actually live through it are gone um no one can uh really relate to it prove or no one can like prove especially now yeah with how how fast information can can be like um put out and controlled and uh, now once once that generation's gone there's no one to tell the tale of what happened yeah you know well, I mean? there's there's no first-hand account and, no, p- and people believe. aren't people and people aren't keeping fucking physical records of shit dude yeah you know on the fucking thing fahrenheit it's all uploaded to the cloud fahrenheit 9 11 dude fahrenheit yeah. 4 11 you know what yeah. that is? uh that's where yeah. what's his name got michael moore got fahrenheit 9-11 from was oh. Fahrenheit 4-11 which was like this book and I don't know if they made a movie or not but it was this book about uh like like the Nazis like burning all the books oh yeah know, like, wash history so they could change the change what the history was yeah, yeah no sure. that's a that's a fucking trippy thing and again at this point like 20 years ago I would have said any of these like worst case scenarios were impossible I would, I would have said, said us being taken over by a fascist regime is impossible. I would have said the whole weird idea that there would be a race war would be impossible. Like any of these weird, like dystopian uh, predictions of our society collapsing. I, I had no, like, I, I didn't buy it for a second. I couldn't buy into it. I was like, there's no way we're constantly moving towards this pr- uh, progress of coming together as a people to putting the race thing and the religion thing behind us. Now, apps, I do not feel like that at all. Like people are clinging on to this shit, like the their labels more than they ever have. So, I mean, it's it's almost becoming empowered to you know represent your label versus just yourself as an individual. So, yeah. you know, that's that's scary as fuck to me because how can we? How can you bring, how can you ho- forget, bring a society? How can you hold a society together if everybody in that society feels like they're their own society within their own, you know, subgroup? Yeah. Like it's just, uh, everyone's a product. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <of> their environment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, shit. 
shit. I don't, it's like, uh, I got, I, I always get this, like, I get this notions a lot that like, um, something happened, you know, like around maybe like 2012 ish, you know, how everyone was like, Oh, beware of 2012, 2012. Yeah. And that made it happen. Yeah. That is, that is kind of like, weird. Like, thing to like think about the it. me, the media, whether it's like someone like an entity of some sort induces these ideas into our heads and then we experience them or, and they become reality or maybe like, uh, we're like this other kind of organism and like the news is like our antennas, you know? And that's how we yeah. like interpret like, threats that are coming and shit and it's like so much more massive than well we all have to be connected to a to a stream of consciousness to a degree and i think there's even that whole thing you know what happens sometimes where you'll think of somebody you haven't talked to in a while and then they'll randomly call you yeah you know or text you or something like that type like there's definitely more there's so much shit that we just don't understand about our own beings and our own abilities and a bunch of shit that again goes back to probably ancient Egypt and all this shit that we probably knew that was like a regular thing. Like, Oh, you know, you can read John's mind. Big deal. I can fucking float 10 feet above the ground. Like this yeah. shit was like no big deal then. Like yeah. we're just starting from scratch and like, you know, like just like even like building something is like very minimum. Like I feel like, yeah. you know, 20,000, 50,000 years ago, like they were fucking doing, crazy shit and they may have just left us behind they may be fucking you know on saturn's moons like they may have like just said hey we got to get out of here like we're gonna start our own space civilization and then you know and like really what does that even mean you know what i'm saying right. like, yeah yeah like is that are they even humans you know because if you're we're only human because we're born on earth but if you're born on mars well you're not you're not us anymore you know yeah. you're something else and then you know multiply that by however many places are colonized and people are born and really like aliens could just be us yeah no i've always thought that to be possible like we're just the same like uh you know like it's kind of like star wars like even like the gray like the gray like the gray the gray alien you know like is an actual like depiction of what a human would evolve into in zero gravity you know what i yeah. mean and being telepathic not needing your mouth yeah you know using your brain more than your physical body having um you know being connected by a fucking like a wi-fi type system with all the information of the recorded history like uploaded to it you know yeah but even and, if you don't even need anything electronic, and if you put like, conspiracies out and all that shit, then that that thing don't work. If the conspiracies are in the ethos and shit, like that, yeah, you know. Well, you'd be able if you knew everything. If you had that, you know, that brain, you'd know right away if something was bullshit or not. Which is the like amazing thing. Like maybe that's really think, well. If, like, there, is, there is no bullshit. The, yeah. There is no bullshit. We we, we just like. There's no bullshit. There's no truth. I, we made up everything. We thought of everything. You know, like this is all just our imaginations. Yeah. No, I mean, this all, like I said, could just be a, a replay. Like we've done this before and we're just living through somebody. Like right now, we're just existing in somebody's screen. Yeah. Like I don't know you actually exist right now. I have no, I have no ability to know that. I could drive over to your house right now. You could, but could you? I don't know where you live, but what's your address? <laughs> I, I, I can't touch you. You know, I don't know. Like I can't, I can't stroke your hair. I can't, I can't nestle my, nestle my cheek on your beard and your mustache. But if we were hanging out, we could. <laughs> we could, but what does hanging out even mean? Are we hanging out? Like what are the, why do they call it hanging out? Like I'm out of here. You know what I'm saying? Like, like we're yeah. so we're out you know we're like we're not in we're they don't call it hanging in oh we're like out of our like uh 
suits or something like out of our like yeah uh, well like we're just we're just streaming and that's why they call it streaming right we're streaming right now but we're not streaming the internet or computers we're streaming our consciousness yeah i'm i'm uploading you're both we're both uploading our consciousness you know right now to the ether to the world to the universe yeah no totally um do you think it do you think that like it's just becoming that way because we are merging with technology I think that we are doing that, but what I also think is going to happen. Um, so we brought up like the sixties and kind of this weird uh, cyclical way that society and things happen. So what, one thing that's interesting is post, you know, during the sixties, you know, people who are hippies and stuff, they were very either atheist, very secular, or maybe they would call themselves spiritual. Right. So post the sixties, the hippie movements get broken up and these hippies start splintering off into different groups and people like ex hippies, they go on a journey to find God. So you have a new wave of Christianity, like a huge amount of like growth in the Christian, you know, Christian church, people like becoming Christians, people becoming Muslims, people becoming Jewish, Hindu, like this, there's this gigantic uprise of people getting religious. And I think that that's, what's going to happen to us again. I think that Right now, we're going through all this turmoil. Everything is dark. Everything feels like it's terrible. It's scary. So we have nowhere to reach but (laughs) up. We need a God. We need something bigger than us. So I think what happens in the future and what happens with these aliens or whatever we call them is it's not just that they're cyborgs where they're biological and uh, like technical components. I think that they reach this level of spirituality as well, of understanding the like the parts of the universe that have nothing to do with technology but just like the metamorphosis of the soul and the spirit and all this like this this stuff so i think that really the future is not just technology because that's cold i think it's also it's a merging of god and technology and like you'll have and biological beings and you have like this one you know what I'm saying, though. This one, <laughs> this one symbiotic joining of yeah. all three. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But that's exactly the what Trinity, it is. Dude. The Earth that's what it. That's what sky. it is, though. That's yeah. what it is because that's why they have the eye, and the pyramid represents a man-made structure, and the eye is the thing that you can't see with your physical eye because you have to feel that. That's the that's the DMT. That's the spiritual, the psych, the psychic eye. So that's exactly, I mean, that's what's crazy is these depictions have been made, you know, eons ago, but that's exactly what that means. We were there. We made that happen. And then it fell, it all fell apart. We lost it. We just need to get back to that point of merging God and technology and our biological selves into one thing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then we could do the YMCA, you know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, dude. Yeah, dude. <laughs> That's, that's why we need to get rid of genders and uh, all these things, you know? Yeah, I mean, you know, so if, you're, if we're going to go that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's all temporary. It's all, it's all nonsense in our physical, in our physical realm. But, um, but yeah, man. And then, uh, so that's, that's where we're at. And it's been a pleasure talking to you, having you on. Hell yeah, uh, man. And just to finish this off, because I told you, I promised you, I was going to tell you about the grandfather paradox. Oh, we yeah. talked about being, you know, grandkids and grandpas. And basically the whole idea of the grandfather paradox is there's two theories. So there's theory number one, which is if you go back in time and kill your grandfather, then you would cease to exist, right? Because your grandfather can't have sex with your grandmother to create your parents to create you. But then there's theory number two, where when you go back in time, you now exist in that timeline. So you are now a being of that time. And so if you kill your grandfather, then that's not going to change you in the, cause you're, you've created a new reality for yourself in that timeline. So it's yeah. just the you that existed in the timeline you came from won't exist, but you now put yourself in a different timeline and created a branch reality. Um, and you become, this is where it gets crazy. You become <laughs> You become the grandpa, dude. You become the fucking grandpa. Like, it's not fucking... Wait, no, fucking, no. Like, you replace your grandpa. 
Like if I were to go there. Yeah. If you were, if you were to go there and kill your grandpa, you become your grandpa. Why? Because the timeline has to, has to stay intact. So you may not do that on purpose, but you kill him, you replace him. You take him out of the equation. Now you become the grandpa because remember in this scenario, then you have an offspring and then offspring has an offspring and then you continue to exist and it just keeps going on, but it's kind of like a different version of you. It's you. If you were your grandpa, this is like a, this is, this is like a game show. (laughs) (laughs) They should make a game show. The grandfather paradox. Yeah. You have to do that. Like go back to your grandpa. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a reality show. And then you marry, you marry your grandma. Yeah, you go, you know, you go back and you fuck your grandpa. Yeah. You gotta go suck your grandpa's dick. <laughs> yeah, man, I'm telling you. So that's exactly how the world works, bro. So <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I'm not uh I'm not following that grandfather paradox too hard, you know. Yeah, I mean, but if you think about it, you're really your grandpa, so it's you don't have to. Yeah. Like, have you ever looked at pictures of your grandpa Anything when he was your age? Anything you say is true. Yeah. Have you ever looked? So, and that's you. He doesn't look like me. I'm telling you, bro. Show me a picture of your grandpa right now. <laughs> hey, I'm going to, like, pull out a picture of me. Look. Well, fuck, I fucked it up. Damn it. I, I, damn it. I wish... Hey, hey, we can edit, right? Yeah. Show me your grandpa. All right, dude. Oh, I, I do keep a picture. I have his ID in my wallet. Let me see. Oh my fucking god, dude! What that the fuck? fucking that is? Dude, like, it, it was. Dude, that's dude. not what it was when I fucking pulled it out of the wallet and when I put it in front of the camera, dude. That's that's like your mirror image. He just doesn't have your goatee, but that's because you grew your goatee. He did. Yeah. He didn't grow his goatee. I think that's where you just cut right there. Yeah. <laughs> Then you cut. Yeah, no, that's me, man. Yeah. How do you feel about that? Do you want me to try to like to try to edit out your information on there? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. do that. Yeah. I'll have to like try to fucking fuck with it. Do that because I don't want my grandson knowing where I live. Yeah, because he might kill you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Full circle, dude. Full <laughs> circle, dude. I'm telling you. But yeah, man, we've uh, we've been rocking this out for almost three hours. Yeah, man, it's it's been a pleasure. Uh, you know, plug yourself, man. Let's where where can the people hear from you? Where can they get oh, updates? I'm uh JP from the HP. All my music, release music is on Spotify, um, and Apple Music and YouTube, and got a bunch of music videos, and I'm gonna be doing some. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Instagram. Keep uh, keep up to date with me on the IG. At awesome. JP from the HP. And then Facebook.com JP from the HP. Yeah. There you go. That was, that, was perfect. that was perfect. All right, man. Well, you have a good night. I appreciate having you on. And you know, we'll we'll be in touch, man. We'll, we might have to keep this like a keep this a thing. Make this a thing. Never. I'll never see you again, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, our, our our grandkids are out there. Yeah. Where do you live, dude? <laughs> You're my grandson. Yeah. No, I want to, uh, I want like Google Earth Live. So yeah. like you can go outside and I can like scroll and see you out there. You know? That would be awesome, man. Yeah. But, but to bring it even full circle, do you remember when you prank called me as my dead grandpa? Oh shit. Yeah, dude. <laughs> and I for a second was like, dude, no way, it's him. <laughs> <laughs> like I feel like I feel like you knew things like you wouldn't you were you weren't supposed to know or something. Like it, it Well yeah. I I mean, because we it started the grandfather paradox, too. Yeah. Yeah. Like we were the first grandfathers of all father time. Have you ever read the short story, The Egg? No. You should read it. Okay. All right. The chicken or the egg. I love you, man. 
Yeah, it's a it's a cool thing. I'll yeah, see you. Tell me, you tell me you love me though, man. I love you, man. All right, I love you, man. Bro. Y'all thought I was dead, I'm on it hey. Came back on you instead, karma yeah. We ain't partners and we damn sure ain't friends yeah. Raising hell till that's where you descend You a damsel distressed uh-huh. And I ain't Captain Save a whole neither It's the first to rent, dude Pay is gon' leave her hey, 